What's up everyone? I'm Bradis Bills. We're back in Planescape Torment. So we are now here at the hive. At least I believe that's what it's called. Um Oh, it's a brazier, huh? Okay. This sarcophagus appears to have been here for centuries. There's no lid. The exterior seems to be made of solid stone. I'm gone. Okay, well. Let's get on it then. Yeah, no. Without further ado, let's get this party started. So, how do I get out of here? One eternity later. Oh my god, there we go. Wow, that was not intuitive at all. <laughs> hey, I figured it out though. Now we're outside, hey. Now we're actually in the hive. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Hive dweller, hive dweller, hive dweller. Okay. Let's see. I'm gone. Some people I need to be talking to, I believe. So let's see if I can find them. We're definitely going to explore all of this, that's for sure. And explore as much as we can. At least. Let's hmm. gate guard. Okay. Okay. I think. I think the person I need to find first is just south of here a little ways. This one that he would be tapping away at the walls, so Oh, he's Wily. Yeah, this seems like him. Okay. Dabis, huh? You see a tall creature with a shock of white hair. Its skin has a greenish cast, and a pair of goat horns protrudes from its forehead. It is dressed in long flowing robes and appears to be floating slightly above the ground. Greetings. The creature turns to face you, and a series of symbols appear around its head. The symbols have a slight glow about them, and they just hover there. Oh, for the power's sake, Piking Dabis. What's wrong? He's a Dabis. Um... Oh, this is Mort speaking. Uh, they speak in rebuses, these annoying word puzzles. If you don't know what he's saying, then we better find a native or some other way to communicate with him. If we want to, an annoying bunch. My bet, they can speak. They just would rather piss everyone else off by trying to puzzle out what they're saying. What's a Dabis? Uh, Chant is their janitors for the Lady of Pain. They float around breaking, fixing, and patching up sigil according to her whims. They're worse than corpse flies, Mort size. You can't swat him, though, or the lady will get upset. Lady of Pain, who's that? She runs the city. You'll know her, you'll know if you see her. She's got these blades around her face. She's about the size of a giant, and she floats off the ground, just like these guys. Mort nods at the Dabis, who's looking at you both. Nobody knows much about her. She doesn't speak much. All you need to know is that you don't want to make her angry. If you see her, my advice, run. See? Davis waits patiently, its hands tucked into its sleeves. A series of symbols materialize above its head, then they vanish and a question mark appears. Okay. Try and strike up a conversation, see if you can translate what the Davis is saying. Ooh, yeah, let's try it. Ooh! Okay, I got some XP. That's a good sign then. You ask the Dabis several questions, trying to get feel for the rebuses that appear above its head. It is extremely patient throughout your discussion, giving you easy sentences to translate. After a few minutes, you start to get the hang of it. Feels like you've done this before. Ah, huh, maybe you can help me. The Dabis waits. Who are you? The Dabis inclines his head slightly, and a stream of symbols appears above his head. You think he's saying he's a Dabis. All right, I had another question for you. What are you doing? A batch of symbols appears above the Dabas' head. You think he's saying he's attending to his duty, or duties. 
Okay, another question. Can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? A lone symbol appears above the Dabas' head. This one shows a metallic female mask with blades coming out of the sides. Just looking at the ghostly image makes you uncomfortable. Oh, that's all I wanted to know. Farewell. Davis bows slightly. Symbol swirl around its head, then it turns away. Ooh, cool. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. That was interesting. Okay, so now I can head in here. I'm following a guide in case you didn't know. I believe I explained that in my first part, but if not, I'm certainly explaining it now. Small dwelling. Wife of Angyar? Oh, who's this guy? Dumb. Here he is, Angyar. Yep. This man looks haunted. His eyes are half-lidded, as if he has had trouble sleeping, and his hair is long and unkempt. His beard is flecked with bits of dead skin and old bits of food. He doesn't seem to notice you as you approach. Greetings. This man glances up at the sound of your voice, and his slack expression vanishes. It looks like someone has lit two fires in his eyes. What be your business barging into my house? His eyes narrow and his teeth clench. Get, or I'll send you back to whatever grave you crawled from. Um, calm yourself. I had some questions. The man's face turns blood red and he begins shouting. Are ye daft? With a snarl, he spits at your feet. Ye filthy scar-ridden dog, off with ye. Or even the powers won't be able to save your hide. Ooh, okay. Um. Oh, okay, I just need to leave him alone. Alright, farewell then. The man throws a parting shot at your back. You'd best never cross me door again, you wretched stinking bastard. Leave without another word. Alright, but we do want to talk to his wife. This woman looks to be in her middle years, and her hair has streaks of gray running through it. Lines of worry crisscross her face. As she sees you, she seems torn between asking you to leave and calling for the man at the table. Greetings. Ye'd, ye'd best leave, for I call me husband. He won't take kindly to ye having barged in your way into our home. If you're going to call him, you would have done so already. I have some questions for you. Um, yeah, sure, that first one. She glances toward her husband, worry in her eyes. I, I have not the time, stranger. Do not be troubling me with such things. Uh, excuse me, are you, are you all right? Me? She seems surprised. Oh, I, I, she lowers her voice. You'd best leave. Me husband has not been himself of late. You'd best not provoke him with your presence. I spoke with him. He seems troubled. What's wrong with him? He's been out of sorts of late. A touch of the cough, maybe. He, she gives an unconvincing half-shrug. What's really wrong with him? I think I think he's done something he regrets. Her worried expression melts into despair. I think he signed one of the dead contracts. I cannot imagine what possessed him to do such a foolish thing. Dead contracts? The dead, the dustmen have contracts that give them the right to someone's body after they die. What do the dustmen do with the body after death? Animate it with their black magics. Turn it into one of the walking dead. Make it a worker till... She looks at her husband helplessly. Till it rots away. Why did your husband sign such a thing? He may have been goat eager to bring home some more jink than custom. He's prideful, but I think he's hurt himself more by doing so. Can't this contract be undone? She looks at you surprised, then sighs. I've tried. I've spoken to the dustman he did the signing with, but he's cold and chill like all the dusties. He even lectured me on me husband, as if I had no right to try and help him. Her lips become a tight, thin line, as if picturing the dustman's face. He was cold, cruel, he was. Let me see what I can do. Who was this dustman your, hub your husband signed the contract with? The dusty called himself Gravesend. I know not his first name. He has a table at the dustman bar in the hive. Gathering dust, I believe the place is named. Ye can most like find him there, trying to get more people to sign his contracts. 
I'll sink him out then. Where is this gathering dust bar? Updated my journal. Head out to the street outside. Go to the memorial stone, then head south and west from there. She taps her finger against her chin. You should run right into it. There's one of them, her face wrinkles in disgust, walking corpses out front. Very well, I'll go see what I can do. I won't turn away such a friendly gesture. She seems grateful, then her worried expression returns. But I must ask ye not to let on. I asked ye to do such a thing. Me husband has a terrible temper, and if he were to find out, she shudders. Vow. Ooh, should I vow or should I lie? Okay, I'll go ahead and vow. I'll be good and whatnot. Tinky stranger, I appreciate your help. It's no trouble. I'll go about undoing your husband's contract now. Okay. Well, that worked out. Let's go back. Okay, apparently now I have to, quote, find a harlot. Don't know what for, right. but we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, all right. This is interesting so far. Oh, there's a dustman. the hell are you? Anna, huh? I'll probably have to talk to you soon. Hive thug, a dustman, the post. Oh, there's one. Okay, let's go talk to her. See a tired looking woman dressed in a tight leather bodice and leggings. The odor of cheap perfume surrounds her like a cloud, and her face is covered with a mask of crude makeup. She smiles as she sees you. Why don't you stay and chat with me a bit, love? Greetings. The woman looks coyly at you. Now ye look to be a blood who's lost something. Mayhap I can help ye find it, Cutter. She smiles slightly. Um... Oh? What good fortune. We probably lost what we're looking for back at your kip, miss. Oh, that's Mort. Mort said that. <laughs> um, actually, I'm missing a journal. Eh? She seems confused. What are you about? Uh, forget the journal. Maybe you could help me find what I'm really missing. Her tone becomes businesslike. I love... Now there's a matter of a finder's fee. I see. How much? Some coppers for a glance at what you're missing, and ten coppers to actually find what you're missing. Uh... Alright. I have no idea what I'm signing up for, but let's go for it. Done. I think you found what you're looking for. Come along then, love. Follow her. That's it then, Cutter. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's what I was supposed to do, but oh well. Uh, I had some questions for you. Well, now that I can concentrate. The woman frowns. I'm not a tout. She frowns, then rubs two fingers together. Unless uh, you've got some chink to pay for my time. I can pay you how much? For ye, she studies you critically. Seven coppers, no more, no less. Other questions of a deeper, gentle, custy more. Sounds fair, here's seven commons. I then, she slips the jink into her palm where it promptly vanishes. Now, there were some things I wanted to know. Ask your questions, love. Um, I'm looking for someone named Farid. Farid? Now that's one of the greater darks, love. If ye be wanting to know about that blood, that'll be, be thrice the coppers of a normal askin. Fair enough, here's 21 commons. She gives your coins a once-over, then shrugs and pockets them. What do you be wanting to know about old Farid? Um, at that price, anything you can tell me about him. She shrugs. Chant is he's a collector, boss. He has a whole bunch of bloods in his shadow. Where can I find him? Woohoo! Now, no one knows for dead sure, but if I were to suggest a place, love, 
I'd say Rag Picker Square. Rag Picker Square? Aye, a big old heap of rags and trash three blocks due west of the mortuary. All the collectors stake their kip there. Chances are, Farad's got his kip there too. What's a collector? You know, them sods that pick up debtors for jink. A sorry lot. They gather bodies, why? Because they don't got the looks to do what I do. <laughs> I say add some other questions. Okay, alright. Learned what I needed to know about Farid. That's good. Uh, I'm looking for a journal. No idea where you'd find such a thing, love. You might look elsewhere, she smiles suggestively. I know some places you might start. Some other questions. And tell me about the city. Rise narrow suspiciously. The city, what about it? What is it? What sigil, you mean? She shrugs, looks around. It's a city beneath your feet and rise into either side of ye. She smiles. Makes visitors' stomachs gallop, it does. Where exactly is Sigil? Sent her all the plains to hear it told, she snorts. If ye believe that wash, why is it wash? She smirks. Well now, love, according to the greybeards and scholars and governors and all of the rest of them, rattling in their brain boxes, they says the plains go on forever. She taps her head. Who's to say where the center is? Hmm. I had some other questions. Um, can you tell me what's of interest around here? She puts her hand on her hips and pouts. Depends on your interest, Cutter. I'm looking for work, I guess. She laughs. You're asking me what you think of becoming one of this sisterhood, are ye? She nearly buckles over in laughter. The screeching is similar to a drunken harpies. Eventually, the gales of laughter subside, and she takes a deep breath. You're, you're a rich man, ye are. What else is around here of interest? Okay, I guess a good time. Uh, I already made ye an offer, love, and it's not an unfair price. Don't know nowhere else ye might be enjoying the delights ye'd have with me. Okay, some other questions. Uh, what can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? She spits and makes a half circle about around her heart. That bladed witch, all high and mighty, mistress of all this city, floating and silent, she kills anyone in her shadow. She tends the city eye, she hisses, and leaves the living things in, to, in it to rot. Alright, I had some other questions, and that's it all. Actually, never mind, farewell. Your loss. When you get tired of losing things and need to find some things, love, you come find me. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Chief, can you spot can you sport me some jink? It's uh, been a long time it has. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask how you intend to accomplish this. <laughs> the woman breaks in. It's twice the cost for the Mimir. Mimir? Uh, or any other degenerate, uh, Mimir. Mimir's a talking encyclopedia. That's me, chief. I see. Well, don't sweat it, Mort. From the looks of her, I'm probably saving you from dying twice. <laughs> May a puck shrivel your innards. Ye you have the stink and fashion sense of a goat herd. You're twice as ugly. Uh... New taunts, <laughs> alright! Ooh. Mort stares, hypnotized, as the harlot lets loose the stream of obscenities. At the end of the verbal av avalanche, Mort is silent for a moment, then turns to you. Wow, chief, got a few more taunts for the old arsenal. He turns back to the harlot, who is catching her breath. I'm also in love. <laughs> All right. Well, that was interesting. Okay, then. Well, who the hell is this guy? He's walking around with a, with a knife out. Jesus, man. Okay. All right. So next, I want to head up here. And talk to this guy I already found. The post, yes. Need to talk to him next. Also, I apologize if my attempt at the Scottish accent is at all offensive to anyone. <laughs> I'm not the best at accents, especially Scottish. So, but that's how it feels. That's how it looks like it's supposed to read, is a Scottish accent for these citizens. Uh, let's see. This filthy-looking corpse is in sad shape. Its shoulders are slumped, and one of its legs is broken, causing it to lean to one side. 
Stains cover it from head to toe. Judging from the smell and the texture, it, the stains run from rotten fruit to mud and bird droppings. To add to the indignity, graffiti has been carved into its body, and several notices have been nailed into its chest, back, and head. Uh, examine the corpse. Despite the many stitches, the corpse's rotting skin is peeling in several places, revealing long stretches of muscle and bone. You'd guess that the zombie is frequently used as target practice. The fruit and mud stains aside, some of the tears in the skin still have rocks and bits of glass lodged in them. One wicked-looking cobblestone is still embedded in the side of its head. Cry out the cobblestone. Ooh. You grab a hold of the cobblestone and pull it out of the corpse's head. Traces of brain matter and rotting flesh slowly drip from it. It looks like whatever was in its head turned to ooze long ago. Okay. Um, do I want to... Uh, yes, I do want to examine. Uh, examine the other notices. A number of the leaflets have been ruined by rain, but some of them are still legible. One tack to his back is from something called the Office of Vermin and Disease Control. The one on his forehead looks like a bill of fare for a restaurant. One on his chest looks like an official notice, and another appears to be some sort of want ad. Okay, um... Uh, look at the post for Office of Vermin and Disease Control. To those hive citizens wishing gainful employ with the most honorable or honorable and generous sigil government, inquire forthwith at Office of Vermin and Disease Control to help stem plague of brain rats. Bounties paid, copper given for each rat tail brought. Tails must be genuine and from rat only, no cat, dog, or fiend tail accepted. Office several streets south and west of Mortuary Gate in Lower Hive. Ask for official inspector in charge, the respected Phineas T. Lord's... What's that? 39? The 39th? Okay. Uh, examine the other notices. Nor the notices. Examine the graffiti. The graffiti runs from obscenities about the dustmen to slogans glorifying what appear to be the local gangs. One piece of graffiti catches your eye. Someone has carved the name Farid on the corpse's left arm, then slashed an X across it. Ooh, okay. Um, let's see. Oh, that's it. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's another. There's Anna, but... Now let's go ahead and head in here, I believe, is where we need to go next. Chief, what the Gathering Dust Bar, yes. Let's say we just give this place the laugh, alright? <sighs> yep, this is where we need to go next. Okay, so I'm looking for this guy. Norochji. Norochji. However you pronounce his name. You see a spindle-thin dustman in dirty black robes. His stiff black hair springs forth from his skull like a crown of spikes, and his leper-white skin is drawn sharply across his skull. He is frowning into his drink and mumbling to himself. Greetings. The dustman looks up, blink once, blinks once, then looks you up and down, studying you. As he studies you, he takes one of his spiked locks and points at himself with it. Niraj... Initiate, Dustman, Guard. You look troubled, Norroach. Uh, he touches his face and traces the shape of his frown with his finger. Troubled, yes. What's wrong? The Dustman looks you up and down. Many troubles have I. Hope can you. A mausoleum awakes. The dead walk. The dead disturbed. The Dustman disturbed. Find out what disturbs the undead, and copper coins will I pay. Very well. Where is this mausoleum? Updated my journal. He nods. Mausoleum by Dustman Memorial. Go north and west from Black Monument. Go to Arch and a semicircle over your heart with this finger, this make. Uh, he wiggles the index finger on his right hand. To the mausoleum, go you will. I'll look into it then. Farewell. Cool. Okay. Getting some, some good quests going on here. 
Okay, so it says I should talk to Mortal Gravesend first. It's not that guy. It's Dustman's Seer the Skeptic. Mortal Gravesend. Here we go. All right, let's talk to him. This tiny wizened man is uh, dwarfed by his huge Dustman robes. They look as if they were chosen to cloak his small stature. Although he looks to be in his late 90s, this man is extremely energetic. He fidgets continuously and his eyes dart around the bar like a bird's. Greetings. The man's eyes gleam as he takes your measure and gives a slight nod in greeting. Hail and well met, traveler. You look like one who is just getting their sigil legs about them. He trails off. Pardon me, have we met before? Your face seems familiar somehow. Uh, no, at least I don't recall you. Hmm, maybe I was mistaken. Oh, Mortai. Mortai Gravesend, not Mortal Gravesend. Okay. Mortai shakes his head. Well, no matter, no matter. How is it that Mortai Gravesend may help you? Do you seek? He collects his tongue as he speaks. The contract, perhaps? Uh, contract. The contract? Why, it is but a simple transaction. From the depths of his huge robe, Mortai pulls forth a dusty parchment and a quill pen. I give you fifty commons. In return, after death, the Dustman faction may claim your remains. He smiles, then clucks his tongue. What use will you have for them at that point anyway? Um, okay, I do want to talk to him. Not interested, thanks. I did have some questions, though. Of course, of course, Mortai nods. Would, it would be my pleasure to answer any questions you may have. Um, you... Uh, yes, here we go. I'm searching for a man named Farad. Have you seen him? Mortai frowns. He's one of those collectors, isn't he? I know little of him. I think Initiate Emmerich mentioned him in passing. Mortai glances around. Emmerich, Emmerich should be around here at the bar somewhere. He can usually be found in the far corner at the heart at the head table, I believe. Oh, had some other questions. Um, have you seen a journal recently? I'm missing mine. Ortai shakes his head. I know nothing about a journal. He smiles. I deal with documentation of a much different sort. Uh, so you mentioned before. Um, okay. Want to talk about anything else? Tell me about that contract. Or, or oh yeah. Are you the one who signed the dead contract with Angyar? Mortai frowns. He looks puzzled. Mayhap. He thinks for a moment. I do not recall the name, however. Um, do you have that contract with you? Mortai frowns, then looks into the folds of his robes. I do not normally keep the documents with me, but it may be that... Mortai pulls forth a sheaf of papers from within his robes and begins leafing through the documents. No, I don't have it on me. Would you like me to fetch it from one of the back rooms? Uh, show more. Uh, yes, yeah. Okay, let's go for that. Hold on a moment. He steps up from the table and departs. Wait for him to Updated return. Updated my journal. After a while, Mortai returns, a dusty piece of parchment in his hands. He holds it up, allowing you to see it, but he does not allow it to leave his grip. Look over the parchment. There it is, Sir Angyar, very somber fellow. Was quick to sign, he clucks his tongue. And now a much richer fellow, who glanced over the contract. It looks genuine and very official. Very well, it all looks in order. Mortai puts the contract away, and you notice he tucks it into his robes instead of putting it in the back room. Mortai clucks his tongue. Does that answer your questions about the contract? I would like to settle that contract. Mortai looks away. I'm afraid that is impossible. The contract is signed, settled, and binding. Uh, let's see. What is it that it says I want to say to him? Uh, just to cancel it. Anguish is preventing anger from, from achieving the true death. Okay. Um, the contract is tearing the man's life apart. It is causing him distress. It is possible that he may not even be able to approach the true death with such emotions churning in his mind. Ooh, yes. Let's say that, yeah. Or Tai chews it over for a moment. Looks like you've negoti no negotiated him into a corner. I cannot, it is a matter of law, my friend. Besides, the burden lies upon the signer to overcome his own feelings. 
in order to reach the true death. I cannot... So what you're saying is that you'll deny him the true death for the sake of a piece of, of, piece of parchment? Yes. Mortai sighs and holds up his hands as if to placate you. Look, it is not how you are making it out to be. You obviously hold the philosophy of the dustman in contempt to damn a man's soul over a piece of paper. Do other members of your faction know of your conduct in this regard? If not, they soon will. Ooh. Yes, is that a good thing to say? Yeah, let's say it. Mortai glares at you for a moment, opens his mouth, closes it, then opens it. By the nine hells, he reaches into his robes and throws the contract at you. Here, he sniffs disdainfully, all for a man's peace of mind. Now be gone. I will leave, for now. Farewell, Mortai. Oh shit, that's right, I'm all full on stuff, huh? Shit, well I need... I need to sell stuff then. Where do I sell things? Is there... Someone here I can... Okay, All there's right. Emmerich who I need to talk to, but... I'd also like to... Okay... Old Copper Eyes... Is this supposed to be the bar? So I don't see a bartender, so... Huh. Okay. Um... Okay, I'm not sure if there is anyone I can sell stuff with here, but... I do need that, though, so... Maybe it is in my interest to... Okay, there's Angiar's... Oh, what did I drop then? So maybe I dropped something not important. Oh, wait, maybe I can just sell stuff to the zombie worker. Oh, oh, the cobblestone. Okay, I probably do need that. Okay, let me try talking to the zombie worker. Uh, the female corpse is dressed in a heavy burlap shirt covered with food and wine stains. Her lips have been stitched together and her arms and legs are wrapped in several layers of bandages. The bandages seem to have been soaked in preservatives to keep the corpse fresh. As a result, the corpse's rotting odor has been replaced with an equally, equally repulsive vinegar smell. Okay, never mind then. Uh, maybe Seer the Skeptic? Who can I sell stuff to here? As you approach, the elderly woman tear turns and stares at you. La, look, who's come a calling on Seer today? Des dear son. She looks you up and down, then shakes her head in disbelief. By every power and its mother, boy, what crypt did you crawl out of? Uh, pff, I don't know. Um, didn't crawl out of any crypt. She frowns, her face wrinkling like crumpled parchment. Right then. What coffin did you crawl out of? She mumbles. One of those shoddy splint coffins at Ham at Ham Hamry's, most like. Gives corpses splinters, I hear. She sniffs. That boy's not been worth a clipped copper since his father died. Who's who's Hamry's? Hamry's is a coffin breaker, pardon, coffin maker. In the lower ward, inherited the shop when his father died, much to the shame of every corpse needing a coffin, crypt, or tombstone and sigil. What happened to his father? Those ears just for show, boy, he died, she mumbles. His son talked him to death, most likely that boy's tongue doesn't stop rattling. I'm surprised he doesn't shake his head loose from his shoulders. You two sound like you have a lot in common, then. <laughs> She narrows her eyes. Do us both a favor and latch that bone box of yours, boy. Don't be drawing comments between me and that yapping whelp. Very well, add some other questions. Questions, eh? Well, you can ask. Seer looks at you with a steely eye and smiles. Crypt crawler. Uh. Okay, tell me about some of the dustmen. Uh, 
Uh, Alright, never mind then. Um, well, shit. Alright, let me just try looking in these barrels and see if I can. Okay, there's some rags. Spar. Okay. Alright, what about in here? Anything important in there? Nope, nothing in here. Okay, I feel like that cobblestone is important, so I'm just gonna go and trade it for something then. What though? What? 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 Maybe this fist of irons, I guess. Okay, yeah, let's do that at least, so I'm not dropping anything of potential importance. Okay. Oh wait, that's right. No, I want to talk to Emmerich. You see a heavy-set man with dark skin and grim features. He is dressed in a dustman robes and is regarding you with a stony gaze. Greetings. You have the look of one lost. The man's voice is like stone settling. Did the wind send you? Or are you here with purpose? Where are you? I am Emmerich, factotum and initiate of the fourth circle. Is this your bar? If you measure ownership in copper, this is not my establishment. You measure ownership in spirit, it is mine. He pauses as if trying to emphasize a point. Dustmen here are my students, they are under my protection. I can ask you some questions. Emmerich waits. Can you tell me about the Dustmen faction? Dustmen seek the true death. Some call it oblivion, but this is incorrect. Dustmen, the true death is freedom from the chains of this false life. False life? This life that many cling to with their emotions is a false existence. As long as one clings to it, they will continually be reborn into it. One must divest themselves of emotion to escape this cycle. I see. Can you tell me about how your faction is organized? Dustmen are organized into five circles. The fifth circle is made of the lowest rank of dustmen, initiates. Our circle is, is comprised of the highest ranking dustmen, the ruling body of our faction. Okay, it's another questions. To join, can you tell me about the dead contracts? Do you wish to sign the dead contract? What is it exactly? In exchange for 50 copper commons, the dead contract gives the dustman faction the rights to your corpse after death. Do you wish to sign the dead contract? No, I had some other questions I wanted to ask. I'm searching for a man, man named Farad. Have you seen him? I would know why you seek the collector, Farid. Um, oh yeah, how should I? Uh, collector. Collectors gather the dead and bring them to us. I would know why you seek the collector. Why do collectors gather the dead? They gathered the dead for us for copper's sake. You pay them for the dead bodies? Why? The streets are not a burial ground. The mortuary is where the dead are to be interred. It is the duty of a dustman. Emmerich falls silent for a moment. For some reason you feel he is trying to make a point. I would know why you seek this collector ferret. Why? Is there something wrong? The collector ferret has brought many corpses to the mortuary of late. One must ask where these bodies are from. Perhaps I could find out where these bodies are from. How would you do such a thing? I would track down Farad and ask him. If you spoke with the Collector Farad and returned with his answers, you will have done a great service for the dustman. Find where the dead he brings to us are from, and you will be rewarded. Very well, I will find Farad, speak to him, and find out where these bodies he, spring, he brings you are from. Emmerich nods. Your path is our path. Return here when you have the Collector Farad's answers. Okay, can you tell me where he is? 
It is not known to me where the Collector Ferret is. He hides from the eyes of the Dustman. I would seek other Collectors and ask them your question. Very well. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Okay, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, being directed to say this. Okay, I would like to join the Dustman faction. Um... If you desire to join the Dustman faction, I will hear your request. Okay, then I'm supposed to say, you have misjudged me. I have no desire to join the Dustman faction. I merely believe what the Dustman believe. Very well. Do you know our philosophy? Yes. Recite it. The goal of all Dustmen is to reach the true death, oblivion. This life that many cling to with their emotions and passions is a false one. As long as one clings to it, one will continually be reborn into it. One must divest themselves of emotion to escape this cycle. Do you believe it? Uh, lie. Yes. Then it shall be tested. Speak with Initiate Nurach. He is here in the bar. Return when you have done what he has asked of you. Very well, I'll go speak with him now. Okay, go talk to this guy again. You see Narach? He is pulling out one of his spikes of hair and using it to scratch a, pot, a spot on his face. Can't help but think he'd look a lot better with dreadlocks. Emmerich told me to speak to you. Emmerich sent you to me? He studies you for a moment, then sighs and points at himself. Morocious Dustman, guard. Serve Dustman interest, protect Dustman interest, protect Dustman reputation. The man sighs again. In the hive, many thieves. One thief wears robes of Dustman, but a Dustman not. Is this thief disguised of a, as a Dustman? Updated my journal. Neroch nods. Find him, I cannot. Important to the Dustman, it is. I could drag him down for you. Neroch nods again. For making my troubles your troubles, copper coins will I pay. Find the not dustmen, deal with them, then return. No roach will wait. Yeah, very well. I will return when I have found this not dustman. Farewell. Okay. Okay, alright. Now I can leave here and head back to Angyar's house. Done. Maybe at some point I can find a seller, a merchant of some kind. We'll see, though. Hopefully there's one here. I mean, it's d and It's got to be, right? There's always merchants. Okay, and I need to talk to his wife? No, talk to Anchor himself. Okay. Done. You see Angyar, he doesn't look any better than before. As you approach him again, he turns slowly to face you. His face tightens. Ye again, didn't ye hear me the first time, ye pox-ridden dog? Get out of me, house. Or so help the powers, I'll carve ye where ye stand. Um, show him his dustbin contract. As you pull out the contract, the blood drains out of Angyar's face. For a moment, he seems at a loss for words. Then his temper quickly resurfaces. Where did he get that? By the powers, you'd best tell me. I took it from a dustman named Mortai. It has your name on it. Ingyar can't seem to take his eyes from the contract. Why'd he bring it to me? He looks suspicious. To ransom it? Um, let's see. And I want to tear it up, right? Yeah. Tear up the contract. Updated my journal. You tear up the parchment, and Angyar's eyes follow the bits of paper as they float to the ground with a desperate look. He shudders slightly, then straightens, as if a great weight has lift was lifted from him. Ye... Uh. Excuse me. He looks like he is about to thank you, then stops and stares at you suspiciously. Nothing's free. Not in the hive, Cutter. Consider this free, and expect a lot of rules in the hive to change while I'm around. Ooh, or I might need a favor in the future. Could you help me? Or, well, if you feel the need to pay me, add some questions. Yeah, let's go with this last one. Woohoo, I got 750 XP. Um, ask your questions. And I ask you why you signed the Dustman contract. 
Perhaps it's the sheer amount of riches and wealth that surrounds ye the distracted ye. He snorts. We have less than nothing, and I need a jink. Didn't seem to matter too much at the time. Where it might come from and selling me body to the dusties is a lot more honest than most work around here. It caused you to change your mind. It's just, he sighs. I saw one of them zombies on the streets a half month ago. One of them zombies that work for the dusties, and it stabbed me in me heart. I knew I'd made a mistake. I didn't want to be any part of that after death. And you shouldn't have signed. We've all had our share of mistakes. Yeah, we've all had our share of mistakes. And Garrett grunts, I suppose so. Other questions? Looking for a man named Farah. Do you know where I can find him? And Garrett nods, aye. That name be known to me, and not to fond name it is either. What can you tell me about him? He frowns. He's one of them collectors, and one with a long shadow. Has quite a few boys at his beck and call. He must. He may not be lord of the realm, but he's not a smart one to tangle with, lord or no. Do you know where I can find him? Updated my journal. Aye, but I wouldn't be doing a favor telling it to ye. His frown deepens. One of me kin fell into his lot a few months back and spilled some of the dark old, old Farid. To hear tell, Farid's actually got his kip buried somewhere under Ragpicker Square. To get to it, there's some kind of portal you need to jump through while carrying some junk in your hand. Where is Ragpicker Square? It's a few blocks from here. Go straight west from the mortuary gate. Keep going until you start seeing trash and rags piled up everywhere. You do best to walk careful there. The collectors there don't always wait for a body to die before collecting on the corpse, you hear? Some other questions. Foster Journal Mine, do you have you seen one? Angara frowns, then shakes his head. Haven't seen a ting such as that, Cutter. Well thanks anyway, farewell. Alright, hey, I did something good. Uh let's head on out then. Oh, actually, hold on, wait, 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 head back in, and ask, had some questions, do you mind if I rest here, and your nods, that's the least I can do, I'll have me wife get some blankets out for ye, I didn't want to sleep yet, I may return when I'm ready to rest though, farewell, okay, and now I can talk to his wife again, Inger's wife smiles as she sees you. Well met, good sir. How can I help ye? Um, I'm low on supplies. Can you help me out? Yes! Okay, here we go. Here we fucking go. Alright. Now it's for sell. Now I can sell stuff. Okay. Alright, so she has zero, but let's see. I want... I want to buy some bandages. Oh, I can't sell anything to her. Huh, okay, well. Never mind, turns out I can't sell. To her, at least. Damn. Oh, because she just doesn't have enough money. Ah, I see. Or... No, I just can't. Okay, never mind then. I'm gone. Okay, I don't think I dropped anything. No, because I have the bandages there. Bandages... Wait. Did I? Did I not? Confused. I could have sworn my slots were full. Okay, maybe they weren't. Oh, no, because I had the contract in one of those slots, and now it's taken up by another bandage. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Okay, now I need to find a woman named Ingress. Done. So on to the next part. Okay. 
not seen her yet. It's a harlot. Thug. Fugitive high. Fr oh, frightened hive dweller. Bane the sender. Okay, hive thug. There's all these dustmen. Pox. Um, frightened. Dabis. Oh, yeah, Dabis. They're all chanting Om, Om. Okay, lots of harlots. But I'm not seeing anyone named Ingress. At least not yet. Elderly hive dweller. Stab us again. Oh, here she is, Ingress. Perfect. Okay. All right. And, okay. You see a haggard woman wrapped in rags. Her hair is disheveled and dirty, and her complexion is extremely dark. Burns cover her arms, and her right hand is a fused lump of flesh. It looks melted like wax is exposed to a great heat. Greetings. Updated my journal. What is it you want to me? The woman's accent is thick, and you are having difficulty making out what she is saying. You want me to leave? Not leaving this city, so I'm not. I can't try it. It's not a city. It's a prison to everywhere. Everywhere? There's worlds. There is. Her eyes gleam madly. Plains that be sink in sands. Fields thirsty nettles be. Sightless worlds where limbs, where your limbs are given life and hate. Cities are dust whose people are dust and whisper ash. The house without doors, the toilet lands. The singing winds, the singing winds. She starts to sob quietly, but she seems all out of tears. And shadows, the terrible shadows there be. Where are these places? Where's... Where's them places? She flings the lump of her right hand in an arc, gesturing at the cityscape. They's all here be. Doors, doors, here to everywhere. Doors. You, you're not knowing this. She squints at you and her teeth start chattering. Tell you I will. Beware every space you walk through or touch in this thrice cursed city. Doors, gates, arches, windows, pictures, frames. Uh, the open mouth of a statue, the spaces, tween shelves. Beware any space bounded on all sides. All these are doors to other places. What do you mean? Every door has a key, it does, and with this key they show their true nature. An arch becomes a portal, a picture frame becomes a portal, a window becomes a portal, all eager to take you someplace else. They steal you away, she raises the lump of her right hand, and sometimes what's on the other side takes part of ye as a tithe. What are these keys? The keys, the keys number as many as the doors of this city. Every door a key, every key a door. Her teeth start chattering again as if she is cold. And a key is... A key is anything. It may be an emotion, an iron nail, held between ye second and fifth fingers. A thought, thought three times, and then once in reverse, or it may be a glass rose. These are all keys that open these doors? Updated my journal. Yes, her teeth start chattering and she clenches her mouth closed and squints her eyes. Yes, yes. Can't leave, can't leave. How did you get here? Updated my journal. From, she seems to calm slightly, and her eyes take on a thousand league stare. Came from a place else from here, almost a life ago, hummed a tune by a glade with two dead trees that had fallen together. A brilliant door opened in the space, between the crossed trees, showed me the city onto other side. Eyes stepped through, ended here. Why can't you go back? Tried. She tries to sob again, but no tears come. Tried. All doors here lead to other places. She shudders and grips her melted right hand. Went through thrice ten portals. Some a purpose, some an accident. None a tim right. Can't find way back. There must be a portal that can take you back. Can't even leave here, the square. And there, the place a death behind the gate waits for me. She points at the mortuary behind the gate. 
then turns back to you, her face desperate. Can't go anywhere in the city. Can't go anywhere? What do you mean? Any team could be a door. Any arch there, any door here could be a porthole. Don't know the key. Would get a scent to another horrible place. Her teeth start chattering again. Got to say, stay away from the closed places, spaces. All door, all could be doors. Could have a key on me, and I not be knowing about it. You, you're afraid to go through any door or arch because it might be a portal. She nods, her teeth chattering. How long have you been afraid of this? She squints. Since the last time I walked through the last portal, the place where my hand, she stops. Since my tenth turning, I'm in me fourth, tenth turning, that's now. Her teeth begin chattering again. Thirty years? You've walked through any door for thirty- You haven't walked through any door for thirty years? Her vision seems to clear slightly. She looks up at you, her teeth still chattering. If you got here, there must be a portal that can take you back. It's only a matter of finding it. She smiles. Her teeth aren't chattering anymore because she is cold. They are moving around inside her mouth, her gums twisting as the teeth shift about. They rise and recede as you watch, chattering as they rattle against each other. What? She hisses at you. Only takes one portal you steps through. Accident. To drive the fear into you. I went through thrice ten. Lost my hand, burned my flesh, lost my sense. She looks at her feet. No, no, no more, no more. I'm sorry, if I can find some means to help you, I will. Farewell. Updated my journal. Okay, well that's interesting. Alright, I also need to talk to Bane the Sender, who I saw recently. She was back here, or he was whoever they are. Right, and okay. Hive thug, hive thug. Hive dweller. Hive thug, harlot. Where was this Bane the Sender? He was somewhere, right? Oh, here he is. All I needed to do was ask. You see a heavyset man with sharp features and a pained expression. Despite his huge frame, however, he has an effeminate look about him. And unlike the other residents you've seen, he looks to have bathed recently. As you approach, he looks up hopefully and calls out in a high voice, Paddock, good sir! What? Hey! His hopeful expression dies as he studies your face. A thousand apologies, good sir, if I have given offense. He gives a slight bow. I am called Bane the Sender, third child of Die Bane the Sender. I am I am one of the many runners in the employ of the House of Senders. No apologies necessary, Bane. What do you want? A thousand apologies for troubling you with such a trivial matter. I, but I see Craddock, an overseer in the hive. Bane looks like he is in pain, but alas, he eludes me. He looks at you hopefully again. Would it be you have heard of such a man? No. Bane gives a deep sigh. I am bound to deliver a message to him, and as yet fortune has chosen not to favor me. I could help you. If I come across the man, I could pass along your message. Bane faces lights. Face lights up like a lantern. Oh, fortune day for Bane and the House of Cinders. Any assistance you could provide would be most welcome. If you can find this Craddock and pass along the message, I shall see to it you are paid for your troubles. All right, what's the message? Bane recites the message almost like a mantra. The shipment must be in the cur in cursed by the third day or there will be a penalty, Bane frowns. I'm told that Craddock will know of the shipment to which the message pertains. If I see Craddock, I will pass along the message. Is there anything you can tell me about him before I go that might help me find him? He is said to be a giant of a man, stern of features. That he is an overseer in one of the hive marketplaces. Alas, I know little else than that, good sir. I see, that's enough to go on for now. Bane bows. Thank you, sir. Should fortune favor you and you are able to bear the message to Craddock, be so kind as th to return and tell me of it. I'll see to it your efforts are rewarded. Very well. Farewell, Bane. Updated my journal. Woohoo! All right. 
Got another thing going on now. Okay. Okay, now it's time for me. Keep on looking around. So far, this part is a lot of walking and talking to people, which is okay. I'm not. I'm not upset by that. Okay. Oh, here it is. This is where I need to go. I need to check out this thing, apparently. Need to talk to this guy. Yes. The man before you looks to be middle of height and years. He is stout with a thick, bullish neck, and his shoulders are hunched as if a great weight was pressing upon them. He wears an impatient look as he stares at the black monolith in front of him. Greetings. The man throws you a glance. There's room, Cutter. No need to ask my leave to stand here. Actually, I wanted to know what this monolith was. It's a tombstone for the plains, he scoffs. Graveyards of names are scratched on that rock, and only hope my name's the one that'll s split this stone in twain. He points at the base of the monolith. Quentin, right there, hammered in just hard enough to send the damned thing crashing down. Tombstone for the plains? Aye, Quentin smiles ruefully. The dusty scratch the names of the dead on this monument here. He gestures around him. And on the walls of this place, not enough space by my reckoning, but no matter. They do their best, can barely read half, their, half the names. What are you doing here? Reading the new arrivals. Try and find a new one every day. Try and remember if I knew them. Nothing more. The dustmen record the names of all that have died on this monument. Aye, they scratch them on this rock, and scratch them on the walls in this place too, Quentin scoffs. I don't know why they take the trouble to take accounting of the dead. The dusties have more care for the living. The living? Aye, you know about the dustmen mourners that come to this place? They aren't mourning the dead, see, they're mourning the living. You can barely get a word in them edgewise without them asking to mourn some poor living burke for ye. Why do they mourn the living? You got me there, Cutter, he shrugs. Might want to put the question to them. Seems to me the dead are thrice worth the pity of any poor sod living in this pit. He nods at the monument. Every name on there is blessed in my book, it is. Ever know anybody who came back after their name was put on there? You mean come back from death? Quentin shakes his head. Not a one, Cutter. Everything that lives dies, and that's the way of things. He shrugs. Still, considering the planes go on forever and all, I suppose anything's possible. I suppose so. Say, I had some other questions for you. No harm in asking, Cutter. What are you doing here? Reading the new arrivals, oh yeah. Um... Okay, have to go through all this again, damn. Alright, uh... Okay. Oh, that is all. Okay. Okay, so now I'm supposed to talk to one of these guys. This dustman is dressed in long, dark robes, and her hands are folded into her sleeves. Her head is bowed, and she is chanting at a measured pace with the other dustmen around her. Greetings. Dustman appears to have heard you, but she does not look up. Um, I would speak with you for a moment. The Dustman lifts her head. She does not stop chanting, uh, keeping the same pace and tone as the other Dustman about her. Uh, let's see, what is it I want to say? Yes, I am here for one who has lost another. The mourner suddenly stops and she studies you. Does the one you speak of feel anguish over the one that has died? And I need to lie. Uh, yes, my friend uh, Adon just lost someone close to him. He feels anguish over the person who died. We will mourn his pain if he will not take offense. If you could, it would ease his pain greatly. The dustman nods and resumes chanting. Okay. Repeat this with the other three. Listen to their chanting. Unlike the chanting you heard when you first approached the memorial, uh, this chant is more subtle. Times the chant is so low, it seems to blend in with the noise from the streets. The dustmen fall completely silent after a minute or so, sev speak several lines praising the true death, then begin to chant again. Okay. 
All right, so I need to do the same with all of them. I won't bother reading because it's all the same thing. That, lie, yes, leave. Do the same with this guy. Uh, speak to you. One, lie, you could, leave. And finally, this guy. Greetings, speak, lie, could, okay. Okay, alright, now I head back inside. I'll speak to you, Death of Names. You see a dustman with a crooked smile frozen on his face. Despite the smile, his eyes are dull as stones, his right arm is shorter than the left, and he keeps it tucked to his side as if cradling a small child. Greetings. The dustman's eyes slide over you. Name? The way he speaks the word. It sounds like the tolling of a bell. I don't know. No name. No name. Can't help you. The dustman speaks in a curious sing-song voice. Need to give a name if you want to see where it's died. What? Updated my journal. Given a name when you're born, give it back when you need it no more. Death of names, death of names. His eyes swim across the monolith in the walls of the area. Buried many names here, death of names has. Tell me a name, I'll show you, I'll show its grave. Uh, I don't know. Try a Don? He shakes his head. Not dead yet, the name is. Uh, not buried here. Not time. Not time. Okay, apparently they're... Alright, whatever. Nothing else there. I need to speak to her. Sevtai. This woman's face looks broken, and she is covered in scars. They look like bite marks and fingernail cuts. She is cradling the shreds of several rags in her hands and is staring emptily at the wall of the monument, at the names there. Greetings. Hist! Get you back! The one's teeth peel back, displaying a row of black canines. What do you want of Sevtai? What's the matter? What's wrong? Those cos cows, chaos men wrecked my cart, attacked me, and killed three of my sisters who tried to stop them. Not sisters anymore. Now they're nothing but names on this memorial wall. Chaos men. Chaos men, a faction, they says. What they are is an addled bunch that runs wild through the hive and does whatever, whatever's they please. We never did no harm to them. Then they lope in like dogs and tear apart anything within their reach. Who are these chaos men who attacked you? They're a hiver gang, a bunch of adult sods that call themselves the Starved Dogs Barking, or some such barmy nonsense. Their actions were unjust. If you wish, I can see that the matter is rectified. If three deaths they caused, then three deaths shall these starved dogs suffer. Sure. A copper earring in your purse, if you pen three of oh, those murdering sods in the dead book jig. I'll see to it that they're put in the dead book. Can you tell me where they might be found? Go out the south gate, spire ward from here, then walk around the block until you come to a place where men run in circles, howling at the sig sky. There's the starved dogs they are. I'll go look for them then. Updated my journal. Woohoo, all right. Just getting all the quests here. Holy shit. Apparently I want to head to... Southeast. So, wait, that's not southeast. That's northeast. Let's head there next. Okay, so it's going to be past all this. I believe it's supposed to be down over here. Could be wrong. Not totally sure. My guy doesn't tell me exactly. Okay, yeah, let's try. Let's try going over here. Because this should be southeast. Stabis again. There's another one of him. 
Interesting. Okay, that's not... Okay, I'm confused. But okay. Oh, is that where I... The hive, okay. I think this is where I want to end up. This looks right, at least. Okay. Chief, just look natural, uh, casual. Okay, being I'm watched gone. apparently. Interesting. There's a collector, damsel in distress, warns for trees. Yes, that's who I want to talk to. Okay, I did end up in the right place. Good, good, good. You see a tired looking, sorrowful man who is gazing at the ash dead tree in front of him. He is mumbling to himself and tapping his chin, as if trying to figure something out. Occasionally, he shakes his head sadly. Greetings. He seems momentarily startled as you interrupt his train of thought. He speaks in a calm, unburied, unhurried tone, but one full of sadness. Oh, greetings to you, friend. How's this day find you? Uh, it finds me well. He smiles, but sorrow still lies in his eyes. That's good, friend. Hope your good fortune continues. He seems about to turn back to the tree. And how's this day find you? He shrugs slightly and proffers a bit of a smile. Fortune finds me well, though I'm saddened just the same. Why's that? He pats the tree beside him. It's the trees here in the hive. They're dying, friend, and no one cares. Seeing the look on your face... He holds up his hand. His ha he holds his hands up, as if to silence you for a moment. It may not matter to some, but it's important to me. I feel it's a shame to see the last tatters of life and beauty in this ward left uncared for to die. Can you understand that, friend? Yes, you're right. It's a sad thing. He seems surprised and blurts out, "Really? Oh, I mean, wonderful. Perhaps you would." He pauses and seems suddenly suspicious. He recomposes himself, speaking in his usual slow manner. In any case, that's good. I suppose you have some questions for me now? No, not just yet. What is it you were going to ask? For the first time, the man seems genuinely happy. Beaming, he explains, it's difficult for anything to survive here. Just look around and you'll see what I mean, friend. I'm not sure if it's possible for the trees to thrive here, even if they somehow were to get enough light and clean water. Go on. Yeah, sorry. He nods enthusiastically, but if enough people care, really want them to live, I just know they'll survive. They'll turn green again and flourish. You could be right. I am right. I'm certain of it. A sense of conviction surrounds him like an aura. He seems so unlike the man you first spoke to. That's all I'd ask of you, friend. Just care for them. Hope for their recovery. In time, should enough people want it, it will come to pass. Uh, can you do that for me, friend? Uh, truth, yeah. Yes, I'll help you. Hey, nice, I got 500 XP. Excellent, my friend, excellent. I thank you. You've given me back my confidence, my purpose. Perhaps I can find others like you who will listen. Perhaps we'll make a difference. What about your companions, friend? Would you speak to them on my behalf? Mort, what do you think? Huh? Oh, yeah, Chief, sure, whatever you say. I'm serious, Mort, can you make the effort? Mort looks at you for a while, silently, then nods. Yeah, I can. If it's that if it's that important to you, I'll do it. Thanks, I had some questions, Mort's... He nods, awaiting your question. Actually, never mind. That should be good. Okay... Let's see, I also need to talk... I need to find someone else here. Just see one of these, then. Harlot, angry hive dweller. That's me. Starved dog barking thug. Ooh! Yeah, that's one of them. Have you got the kid? Okay, alright, it's just seeing if anything's there. 
Okay, just another one. Okay, I'm going to do... Wait, no, not what I wanted to do. I wanted to... There we go, I wanted to save. Just in case something goes really bad. Okay, then let's switch to green steel knife. And let's attack this guy. Damn it. Woohoo! Alright. Let's grab his gold. Alright, there's one down. Okay, there's it's just an angry hive guy, okay. And let's attack this guy as well now. Come on, stop moving so I can kill you. Be cooperative here. Oh guy. Damn it. Ooh, I got a critical hit on him. Oh shit, they're ganging up on that? me. I'm hurt. Encore! Encore! Yep, that's why I saved. <laughs> you know, I was just sitting here wondering whether okay. you were going to get up. Okay, let's load. You have to go spoil my fun. Yeah, let's load this. Okay. Okay, Done. so good note to self. Um, oh, hold on, wait for me. Yeah, right weapon. There we go. Die. Oh shit. There's one down. Oh, okay. Okay, hey, there's two. Nice. Alright, got five coppers from him. 10 from that guy. Nice. Okay. Took some damage. Let's see if I can heal. Yeah, let's uh, use. Okay. That worked alright. Let's use again. Hey! Alright. Whoa, what the hell was that sound? Oh, was that sound of healing or something? Okay, let's wait for him to... Yeah, there we go. Now he's on his own. Woohoo! Oh, a bronze ring, huh? Okay, hold on. Let me... Okay, let me go and heal with this. There, now I have space. I can actually grab that now. Perfect. All right, cool. I killed three, so now I have done that quest for Sevtai. Now let's talk to this damsel in distress. Uh, you see a pretty young woman. Her hair is in disarray, and the bodice of her dress is torn. She looks about in desperation and then notices you. Greetings. She runs up to you and grabs your arm. You notice the front of her dress is stained with blood. Help me, Cutter, please. They're killing my sister. She begins to tug on your arm. Ooh, okay, okay. Who? Uh, she looks around wildly. This drunken man who followed us from one of the taverns... We thought he meant no harm. Please, Cutter, there is no more time. Help us. Okay, okay, so so I'm supposed to call her out. Okay, wait, first you said they were killing your sister, and now you say he is killing her? Which is it? She stares at you, unsure of what to say. I, I'm distraught. I made a mistake. She glances at the blood that stains her dress. Please help me, Cutter. Examine the blood on her dress. 
You glance down at her dress and look at the blood. Although it does appear to be real, it has completely dried. It must be hours old. That blood is hours old. What are you up to? You see your eyes flick to the bloodstains and then back to you. You think you can hear a hint of nervousness in your voice. You are mistaken, Cutter. Please help me. My sister lies dying while we tarry. Okay, let's, uh, let's bluff. You're up to something. Tell me what's going on or I'll kill you. Uh, she looks into your eyes and then glances at the scars that cover your body. She swallows nervously and you see her pale before your eyes. I, I'm supposed to lure people into an alley nearby. They're waiting there to take your jink. She looks at you apprehensively. Let me give you some advice. She gazes at you in silence and nods her head. Don't pick someone like me as your mark. Choose some drunken fop who, who looks like he's never seen a battle in his life. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I guess let's go with that then. <laughs> she nods once curtly. And make sure he looks like he has more than a couple coins to his name. Now get out of here. She nods curtly and then backs away from you. She hesitates for a moment then and turns to leave. Thank you, Cutter. She sprints off. Leave. Alright, interesting. Okay, alright. So now I need to head in... Where am I supposed to head? It's... Lines on this building have withered from the heat emanating from the walls. You've got to see it to believe it. The burning man right here, right inside. The burning man, huh? Like burning man? Burning man, burning man? Okay, I'm looking for a tattoo parlor. So I think it's over here? Hey, I healed one. Nice. Okay. Um, what the hell is that? Black Abishai. What the hell? Hive Thug. Oh, God. Yeah, take him out. Take him out. Oh my god, are we just all missing? Okay, there we go. I finally hit him. Die. Hey, I healed one. You see that? Whew. I'm hurt. Ooh. Okay, got one. Let me heal. Yeah, definitely need to heal. 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 Let me do one more. There we go. That's some good heal in there. Okay, he's near death, huh? Well, let's bring that to death. Wait, what the hell? What the hell is going on? Okay, maybe never mind. Maybe never mind. Okay, this. Did you see that? All right. Shit. Did you see that? Okay. All right. All right. We did it. We did it. Hooray. Nope. Inventory is full. Okay. Dirty rat charm. Huh. Oh yeah said something about rat tails and stuff, huh? <sighs> okay, um... Cleaning rags, rags. Huh, okay. Do anything with that. Um... Now 
I don't want to do that. I want to... Oh yeah, do I need this left arm anymore? Probably not. Let me go ahead and drop that. I really don't think I need an arm on hand anymore. Let me take the bronze ring. So now I have two bronze rings. And do I still need a wooden club? Probably not. Oh, this is just... Okay, I don't need this cobblestone. Polish cobblestone. Yeah, I really don't need that then. That can drop. I thought it was like something important, but no, I was just doing something good for the dead man. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I just dropped. Okay. Alright, let's see if this is the tattoo parlor. Smoldering corpse ward. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a tattoo parlor, damn it. This is probably the worst place we can be in Sigil at the worst time. Oh, really? All right. Why is that? Is it because we just got attacked mercilessly? Oh, God. Come on. Leave me alone. Okay, let's try heading in here, then. Get away from all this. Hey, there we go. Okay, Fell's Tattoo Parlor. All right, let's talk to Fell. You see a Dabis, but something about it strikes you as odd. It has the same shock of white hair, the same greenish cast to its skin, the same pair of goat horns. Then you suddenly realize this one is walking on the ground, not floating. For some reason, that makes you uneasy. I had some questions for you. The Dabis waits. Who are you? Dabis inclines his head slightly, and a lone symbol appears above his head. It is blurry at first, then resolves into a white oval with a black lightning bolt through it. For some reason, you know the Dabis has a name. Its name is Fel. I feel like I know you, Fel. Fel bows reverently, and a stream of symbols swirl about his head, rotating clockwise, then counterclockwise. You have to guess at some of the symbols, but you think he said something about this not being the first time you have come to this place. Do you know who I am? Another series of symbols materialize quickly and sharply into focus above Fel's head. These symbols are not as difficult as the others. You think he said he knows you, but he cannot say any more than that. Why not? For a moment there is no response from Fel, then a stream of rebuses, rebuses appear. As if trickling out of Fel's mind, you think he's saying he's sorry, but you can't translate the rest. I see, I had another question for you. What is this place? A slow train of symbols materialize around Fel's head. The symbols take several moments to resolve, starting with simple lines, then fleshing themselves out into breathtaking colors. You're guessing at some of the symbols, but you think he's an artist. And this is a tattoo parlor. I had another question for you. What lies beyond that curtain, Fell? A caravan train of symbols slowly materialize around Fell, one by one. You think he is saying it is a gallery of some sort, a gallery of you. The next part is difficult to translate, but you think that Fell is saying he is sad for you. Sad? Why? Another caravan of symbols forms around Fell, this time forming a circle. He says something about you being marked and tormented. There's another section you cannot translate, and the last portion seems to be something about you enduring pain. What do you mean? A long string of rebuses uh, appears above Fel's head, then surrounds his arms like manacles. He seems to be saying he admires you for enduring losses. Go on. A long string of rebuses appears above Fel's head, then falls, covering him like a cloak. He seems to be saying these losses cover your life and your other lives. You're not certain what the other symbols surrounding this message mean, however. Uh, is there anything else you can tell me? A brief series of paper-thin rebuses appear in an orderly row next to Fel, then vanish into glowing moats. You think he just warned you not to sign anything during your travels. 
Very well. Another series of rebuses appear, forming a spiral. They have the texture of a question about them. You think he just asked you if you feel whole? Um, truth, I don't. In fact, ever since I woke up in the mortuary, I feel like something's missing, something inside. Bell nods, and a series of symbols materialize in a halo around him. You think he is telling you to be strong, to keep faith? I'll try. I had some other questions. You say you've met me before, Fel. Do you know how I died? Fel does not respond for a moment, then slowly, menacingly, three symbols materialize above his head, each of them casting a long shadow. You think he's saying something about shadows? Shadows? The three symbols swirl about each other, each leaving a faint, black, misty trail about them. They take on a ragged edge, like teeth and talons, and multiply. Three split into three, then into three again, until the entire room seems covered by a swarm of shadows. He seems to be saying that you were killed by many shadows. Why? The shadowed symbols swirl into one, then dissolve, to be replaced with a simple symbol. Bell doesn't seem to know why. I see I had some other questions. Can you tell me anything about these tattoos on my body? Bell studies your body for a moment, walking around you. He mirrors each symbol as he examines it, then returns to face you. From what you can make of his floating symbols, he's saying the tattoos are not his. Okay. So, uh, I'll keep that in mind. I had some other questions. Okay, so apparently I don't have access to the really good tattoos he can give me yet, so I'll hold off on asking him to look at tattoos. Okay, next I want to go back out and talk to Barking Wilder. Ah, oh, shit, these guys again. Forgot about them. God, man. There are so many hive thugs after me. Screw it, I'm fighting them. Let's go for it. There we go. go. Now they're all running. Good, 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 good. Now I should be able to talk to this guy. Parking Wilder, there he is. Okay. Okay, this wild-eyed man is hunched over, snarling and giving low growls. It looks like he hasn't trimmed his hair in years. It's so long, it forms a veil over his eyes. He has a long, stringy mustache caked with grease and sweat. And the tips of the mustache droop so much that they have become tangled in his ragged beard. Okay, I don't think I am able to, so let's leave him alone, actually. Well, that's a tree with one snapped branch too many, Mort rolls his eyes. No sense in chatting with Shao-Sitex. I think that's how you pronounce that. I am not sure. Uh, they're chief, they're a barmy bunch. Shouse attacks. They're a faction who don't have any rules, except don't keep one thought in their head for too long. They're sometimes called chaos men. You need to, no need to explain why. How do they get members? They just seem to attract members like flies. Well, members that are crazy or chaotic enough, I suppose. I don't think they have any recruiters, though you really can't say anything about them for sure. I see, thanks for the information. Okay, so apparently if I have gotten enough points in Chaos, I can talk to him and become one of the Chaos men, but I have not, nor do I necessarily care to. Okay, so now I need to come back here in the daytime, so let's head back and let Sev Tai know that I killed three of the barking dogs, or whatever they're called. <sighs> Ooh, 
Oof. Man, I forgot. It's been a couple days since I've recorded this and oh man I forgot how much talking it is <laughs> it's fun don't get me wrong I'm having a good time with this game it's just, right. it is just a lot <laughs> okay let's head back here so I can let her know then I really need to find a place to sell some of these things so maybe I'll do that next. Go to the market and talk to some people. All right. First, let's talk to Sevtai. You again. The woman turns to face you, her lips peeling back and snarl. You have news for Sevtai? Found the starved dogs barking and penned three of them in the dead book. Updated my journal. The powers be not blind in their justice this day. The woman reaches into her spider-like hair and draws forth a copper earring. Here you are. A pretty bit it should fetch. Tis worth thirty-three coppers at least, I'm sure. It belonged to one of me sisters, but she won't be needing it anymore. Very well, farewell, save time. I couldn't carry any more, so I had to drop it. Ah, shit. Okay. Oh, shit. Um, what do I drop? What do I drop? Um... What am I not going to need? I probably don't need these cleaning rags, maybe? Alright, I'll just go ahead and switch them out like that. Yeah, I don't know. That should be okay. I should be fine to do that. Let's head west then. I think that's where... Someone said the market was. Let's head there and see if I can find someone to sell stuff to. Okay, more thugs. Their harlot. Hey, Done. Okay, I don't necessarily want to talk to people or explore a lot. I just want to find someone that is a merchant. Hey, cut up. Come here. Okay. Come on in and sleep it off. Have a good one. Is there anyone? Okay, there's a collector. She's all yours. Harlot. Okay. Hey, Cutter, I got a good place for you to stay. Come One inside. ear. You live longer. Hexug, Hexug, Collector. Harlot, Collector. Harlot. Okay, that takes me someplace else. Down and rest it off. Come on, girls, we're the finest in town. Don't make me feel like it. Hey, Connor, hmm. I got a good place for you to stay. Come inside. You okay, I we got warm beds in here. Cutter, don't see on one, so I'm just gonna head back and I'll go rest at a All right. my my friend Angar's house. That way, at least I can me and Mort can get some healing. Then I can return to uh. The southeast parts of the hive in the morning. <clears throat> Man, yeah, these uh Whew. Yeah, these these thugs sure love to go at after me <laughs> at at night. Uh some questions. You mind if I rest here? You're not, so that's the least I can do. I'll have my wife get some blankets out for you. Thanks. Alright, you've rested for eight hours. Oh yeah, so it's a it's a long sleep. Woohoo! Alright, and daytime again. Perfect. Let's head back in. Uh, ooh, excuse me. Uh, 
Okay, now I want to find a drunken harlot. All right. Okay, there's a collector, an angry hive dweller. We head back. We head down this way. See. Oh, they're coming at me again. Die. Got one. I'm hurt. Oh, I'm not looking good. Oh, shit. Let's use those. Okay, phew, all right, they're running. Thug, okay. More thugs over here. Drunk Harlot, here we go, Drunk Harlot, okay. Not sure if I have enough wisdom to pull this off, but let's see. Woman stumbles into you, then takes a step back. Looking up at you with a half smile, she smells like a distillery. Uh, greetings. Hello, she waves at you, then breaks into a stream of giggles. Hello, big cutter. She starts laughing again. Are you okay? She squints at you, puts her hands on her hips, and bends over enough to give you a bird's eye view of her bosom. Don't I look okay to you, cutter? Well, she shakes herself, causing numerous jiggles, then starts laughing again. You're the one who looks to be needing some love and care. She pokes you in the chest with her finger for emphasis. Yeah, well, anyway, look, maybe you can help me. I have some questions. Oh, so you think I can help you? I aren't you uh, demanding cutter. Well, sweep me off my feet with such flattery. She smiles. Um, can you tell me about this city? Yes, she gives a drunken laugh. Yes, what? Yes, shh. She squints at you. Was it? <laughs> All right, never mind. Farewell. You're about to turn away when you stop in your tracks. You suddenly have a feeling that something is wrong. And with this feeling comes a realization that this woman's drunkenness is just an act. As you take a closer look at her, you see the harlot tucking something into her sleeves. It looks like something of yours. Ooh, okay, lost five copper, okay. Let's observe her technique, huh? Wait the woman to pickpocketing you again and observe her technique. Ooh, a thousand XP, hell yes. You lean in close, laughing along with her, and you watch as her hand darts to your purse again. Her technique seems to be distracting the mark with her drunken chatter and her bosom while she lifts the coins from his purse. The sleeves of her dress look to be long and baggy on purpose to hide any stolen items quickly. You make a mental note of her technique, even as her hands make another grab for your purse. Okay, now let's do this. Let's grab her hand. Your hand snaps out and wraps around her wrist in a crushing grip. She immediately sobers up, desperately tries to rank um, her hand free and, start, and starts screaming at the top of her lungs. Oh god, uh, 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 quietly stop screaming or I'll remove your lungs, Jesus, or snap her neck with her free hand. Uh, fuck it. Her eyes widen as your hand constricts around her neck and she claws desperately at your fingers. Before she can break free, there's a snap and her, snug, her struggle stop. Drop her. You release her and she slumps to the ground. She was far easier to kill than the dustman. You feel a strange shiver as you look at her body. You know you've killed others this way. You desperately try to cling to the memory, but it slips away, submerging into your consciousness. Alright, let's get my coins back. Ooh, she had a knife and a stiletto, huh? Can't take any of those, so well. 
Okay, next, next. Let's pause, so that way I don't get attacked again. Next. Okay, now let's head into the bar. Now I want to head in there, okay. So let's do... Oh god, these guys. I'm hurt. Hey, come on, Looking no. Watch, Chief. Just look natural. Uh, casual. Whew, okay, 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 okay. Alright, let's... Let's stay in here for a little while and heal, then. <laughs> At the very least. Okay. Okay, talk to Trisilla. Okay, that's her right here. Perfect. This, this is a woman with fading bruises on her face and arms and a look of despairing longing in her sunken eyes. Oh, Jesus, that's not good. She might have been pretty once, but those days were long ago. She turns slowly to face you. Life pours into her features, and the spark of sardonic light that glances in her eyes now makes you wonder if your eyes were deceiving you. Welcome to this motoring corpse, scarred man. Who are you? I? I'm Trusilla. And you must be clueless. Don't ask me how I know that. It just shines off you. Shine? Shines. Right. Answer some questions for me. Hi, Traveler. What is it you seek? Looking for a journal. Would you happen to have seen it? A journal? Oh, sure. I've kept an eye out for all straight journals, just in case some scarred man walks into my favorite bar and starts asking about it. Do you ask that of everyone you meet? What a fascinating life. Okay, well, you know, hurtful just because I do ask everyone I meet. Um. <laughs> okay. You have a smart mouth on you, don't you? I a smart mouth for a smart head. I ain't the adult cove you might think sod. Uh, I got a brain on me. You're so smart you should be able to answer my questions. Um, who is that burning by the entryway? Updated my journal. That despair you saw on her face before flirts, flits across it again like a black winged shadow before she masters herself. That's Ignis, one of the greatest wizards ever to come out of this slummy excuse for a cesspool. They caught him and they opened a channel to the plane of fire through him, and now he's just a doorway for it, keeping himself alive by force of will alone. If someone could douse him for a few moments, it'd give him his life back again, but they don't make enough water to do that. Okay, show more. Okay, interesting. Okay, someone should be able to find something. Ah, oh, well. Uh, what's your connection to him? Her voice practically throbs with a deep ache. I was Ignis's lover, and he, my beloved. He loved the flame more than me, and now he has become the flame. And because I love him, I love the flame. But that's all done with now. Now I wait for him to douse himself. I sell what little I have just so I can be near him. I understand. Farewell. Interesting. Okay, so that is Ignis, huh? Okay. Oh yes, Candrian. Alright, I need to talk to them next. You see a soft-looking man with gentle, far-staring eyes. He dresses in supple leather clothing and carries various implements of use and destruction about his body, such as ropes, spikes, tinderboxes, and empty vials of air. He looks half gone, literally. There's an insubstantiality to his existence, as if his essence had been partially leached away. He focuses those eyes on you, and suddenly you find them gripping and determined. Greetings to you, O Seeker. Greetings. He carefully sets down the mug he's holding and gives you all his attention. I've seen the far reaches of the multiverse and return to tell the tale. I have walked upon the bodies of dead gods and spun moonbeams in the astral ahead of a thousand shrieking Githyanki knights. I have passed the edges of existence and watched my essence shiver away before me. What is it I can do for you? I had some questions for you. Perhaps I have some, I have some answers for you. Speak and I shall tell you. Oh yeah, Ingress. I met a woman named Ingress with very bad teeth. 
She said she had come through a portal from some world that was opened by a tune hummed near two crossed trees. Can you get her home? He pauses briefly, thinking. I know the portal of which you speak, though I have not traveled it these thirty years gone. I will take her home, Seeker. Go tell her to await my arrival, then meet me back here, and I will tell you if I was successful or not. Oh, cool. Hell yes. Oh, okay. Oh, they can also talk to him as well. Updated my journal. Um. Okay, what are you doing? I? I'm fresh back from negation. I am, am trying to restore my essence before it slips away from me altogether. Negation? What do you mean? His eyes cloud over. I went to the inner planes to discover my true essence. I made the mistake of visiting the negative material plane in order to understand my body's urge to decay in the cycle of death and life. I thought myself protected against the ill effects of the plane with my magic, but I was wrong. The blackness of infinite nothing pressed on my soul, and I was beset by shadows that sought to snuff out my very soul. I lost my way for a time, for an eternity, and nearly lost my existence. I could feel my essence falling away from me, and am even now half gone. Never will I return. Okay. How did you survive? Updated my journal. How did I survive? He smiles tightly. With a piece of nothing that held back the nothing. Nothing can stop nothing, you know. And so I carried nothing in my hand to protect me. Do you plan to journey to the ultimate negation yourself? You have the smell of desperation about you, and so I make you this gift. Hold it in your hand, and when the shadows press in, and it should protect you and your friends somewhat, should they remain close to you. Heh. <laughs> he passes to a small black token that looks as if it has no dimensionality to it at all. Okay, some more. Thanks, tell me more of the planes. You would know more of the planes? Ask, and I shall tell as best I can. Would you hear of the outer planes, the prime material, or the inner planes? Uh, tell me of the outer planes. Now, the outer planes, where shall I start? Uh, do you know the cardinal rules of the planes on which all others are based? Do you know about the composition of the outer planes? Do you know of the great ring and its divisions in our hearts? Do you know of the individual planes? Each of these leads to the next, and so it is best to start from the beginning. Uh... Tell me of the composition of the planes. Oh god, this is so much reading. Okay. Okay, I should, I should know this though. The outer planes are created of and by belief and thought and faith. They take their imagined form from the prime material plane, shaped into forms that stagger the imagination. Built by the accumulation of belief, belief creates the planes, belief is power here. Change belief and you can change the nature of reality. The creatures that are born here, the plane born, like the fiends and celestials, are truly born of the thoughts and concepts of mortals. They each express some sort of ideal, and the more powerful the ideal, the more powerful the being. Thus the being that symbolizes love is one of the strongest of all. Go on. That's why the powers, gods some call them, live out here. This is where all the faith in them comes. This is where they are at their most pure and most strong. Their realms are extensions of their very beings, manifestations of their godly essence, all of it informed by belief. So the composition of the planes is belief. Tell me of the great ring now. Among the loose unity of plane walkers, we conceive of the infinite outer planes as a ring surrounding the plane of ultimate neutrality, the outlands. The spire atop which Sigil sits is in the center of the outlands. The further one travels away from the spire, the less neutral the plane grows, until it spills into the neighboring planes. Each of these planes impinges on the outlands, spinning themselves into law and chaos, good and evil. The Great Road marks the demarcation between the Outlands and the Gate Towns that spring up around the gates to these plains. Beyond the Gate Towns lie the Hinterlands, uncharted territory that is lost to history, that loses thought. Danger lies in the Hinterlands. Okay, go on. 
The outer planes differ by morality, not substance. For you, we'll divide the planes into three sets. The upper planes of good, the lower planes of evil, and the boundary planes of neutrality. These are then divided further by law and chaos. Within the outlands, in the middle, which of these interest you? Oh, so it's kind of like, are you like lawful evil? Uh, the, like there's like it's like, uh, good, it's good neutral evil, and then lawful neutral chaotic. So it's like you can be chaotic good or neutral neutral or lawful evil in any variation of the nine. That's what it sounds like he's saying. Um. The upper planes, I guess. Of the upper planes, there are neutral planes. The lawful planes and the chaotic planes. Yep, that's pretty much exactly what I was saying. What would you know? Um, the neutral planes. Uh, the neutral upper planes contain the beast lands, a place of neutrality and goodness with a slight tinge of chaos, where the animals rule in the eternal noon and night. They hold Bytopia, twin paradise of industry and labor, where all work toward the good of all and Elysium, the sweetest plane of goodness and calm I have ever come across. Alas, right now, I am not well enough to enjoy any of the restorative effects. What do you hear of now? Uh, tell me more of the pla planes of the Great Ring. The Outlands. The Outlands are absolute neutrality, probably the best place for a body to visit in the Outer Plains, outside of Sigil. If you don't want to have a Plains morality forced into your heart, everything balances out in the Outlands, as it should be. For the plane that sits at the center of the Outer Plains, Power's realm, realms are scattered about there, here, and there are handfuls of gate towns that open into the rest of the Outer Plains. The gate towns usually mirror the philosophy of the plane their gates open onto, and in the balance of belief isn't kept in the town, the town slips into the nearby plane. It's a bad situation for everyone, because few of the folks in the towns really want that change, but enough of the outlands, what more would you know? Okay. Alright, I had some other questions. Um, looking for a journal I lost. I've seen no journals, okay. Uh, do you know a collector named Farad? Farad grew up to be a collector. How long ago was this? When I set out last, he was but an officious stripling in one of the upper wards. Heh. <laughs> Time does change some people. No, Seeker, I don't know Farad anymore. I'm willing to bet. Okay. What is this place? Plus the cosmos have shifted or we had spun into the mazes. Um, I would say that we're in the Smoldering Corpse Tavern. Mazes, what do you mean? Aye, the mazes, where the lady dumps those who've displeased her. He makes a small semicircle over his heart as he speaks the lady's name. If you'd know more of the lady and the city, find a tout or some such guide. Alright, very well, farewell. I uh, yeah, that was a lot of talking. Oh my god. Okay, alright, so talk to him. Next, I want to talk to Dakon, this guy right here. Oh, that was so much talking. My jaw is sore now. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, the man before you is old. His dry yellow skin has the scars of one who has traveled everywhere and never rested long in any one place. His pinched face is inhumanly angular, and his ears sweep out from his skull, tapering to points. He wears a loose-fitting orange tunic, and a strange shimmering blade is strapped across his back. The blade looks to be a two-pronged glaive, made of some mental metal, whose surface swirls like a film of oil on a pond. Greetings. The man turns to you, his eyes like polished coal. He stares through you, and for a moment you wonder if he might be blind. The weapon suddenly turns a dead flat black, mirroring the man's eyes. Are you alright? Hail, traveler. Oh, okay. Hail. Your eyes are the weight of one who has traveled far to be in this place. Oh, nice. I don't have to do much reading now. You could say that. God damn it. Of course, as soon as I say that, the voice acting stops. God damn it. Ugh. This man's gaze does not waver from yours. I am known as Dakon. 
The emphasis he places on the word known strikes you as odd, yet familiar at the same time. You are not known to me. I do not know myself. That is for the best. In knowing yourself, there would be little in the plains left worth knowing. He falls silent for a moment, still studying you with his cold black eyes. I would know why you have come to the city. I'm looking for answers, I have many questions. Speak your questions, I will hear you. Your features are unfamiliar to me. What are you? A githser a githserai. Githserai is one of the people. One of the people. A githserai. Yes, but what are the githserai exactly? Yakan is silent for a moment, then speaks. Our history does not need to be made known to you. We would bleed to death on time's blade before I recited a fraction of the histories of our people. I don't need to know your histories, but I would know of your people as they are now. Dakon is silent for a moment. Know this and accept it as an answer. We are the people who make our home upon the shifting plane of limbo. With a deft motion, Dakon slips the blade from his back and holds it before him. Wait to see what happens. There we mold the matter of limbo with our minds. We forge cities with our thoughts. As you watch a series of rippling waves of metal begin to roll forth from the center of the blade, the pitch and crest of the waves match the inflic inflections of in Dakon's voice. In its chaos we dwell, with only our knowing to preserve us. We are the Githserai. What is that blade you have? It moves, shifted in response to your voice. It is Karak. Karach. Karak. Uh, blade. It is an object that lets others know the rank of the wielder. Karak, what does that mean? Dakon falls silent for a moment, as if searching for the correct words. In your tongue, the closest translation is chaos matter. The people may shape it with their thoughts. Shape it with their thoughts? Karak is not shaped by heat, but by knowing oneself. It is a mirror that reflects the will of the wielder on its surface and in its edge. When one knows themselves, the blade is strong, harder and stronger than steel. When one does not know themselves, the blade is as water, formless and weak. What rank does the blade signify? The blade is a symbol carried by the Zerth. The Zerth is one who knows the words of Zerthamon. In knowing the words of Zerthamon, they know themselves. Zerthamon. Zerthamon founded our race. He knew the Githserai before they knew themselves. He defined the people. He gave them one mind. Okay, I had some... Yeah, what is... Uh... Okay, I had some other questions. <sighs> okay. Uh, you seem to place a special emphasis on knowing. What do you mean? All things, whether structure or flesh, their existence is defined by their knowing of themselves. And if a man does not know himself? When a man when a mind does not know itself, it is flawed. When a mind is flawed, the man is flawed. When a man is flawed, that which he touches is flawed. Dakon pauses. It is said that what a flawed man sees his hands made make broken. Do you know yourself? Dakon falls silent. His coal black eyes take on the same distance that you know that you noticed when you first spoke. I ask again, do you know yourself? When Dakon speaks again, his voice has changed. His words echo like a great stone dropped into a chasm. It looks like he is forcing the words from his chest. It is not my will that you know this. Okay, uh, some other questions. <sighs> Lost a journal. Do you know where it might be? The location is such a... Of such a thing is not known to me. Oh my god, okay. Is there anything that I really need to ask him? Um, okay, let's ask him about the city. It is known by the name Sigil. Among the people it is known as the city that does not know itself. It doesn't know itself, what do you mean? The city exists, but it does not know itself. In not knowing itself, its existence is flawed. How is, it a How is it flawed? The city exists in opposition to itself. It has set itself apart from the plains, yet it seeks to be everywhere at once. Its walls are doors, yet it keeps these doors locked. Such an existence tells of a thing that does not know itself, and not knowing itself, it is flawed. When you say the city is ever... Hold on, show more. Okay. 
What if the city is not flawed? A thing does not need to be ordered and have purpose to know itself. What if these contradictions are strength that you cannot see? Or what if the city is not flawed and you just do not know the reason for its contradictions? There is order in everything. Perhaps there is an underlying pattern that you cannot perceive. Um... Okay, let's go with this one. To your question, a question. What if the city is flawed and you see its contradictions all around you? To your question, a question. You claim the city's existence is flawed. You have accepted this rather than explore the possibility that something greater may exist. That suggests you are flawed and that you do not search for knowledge, but only for a convenient answer. Yeah. That con falls silent. There is no knowing the answer to the questions we have asked. Yet the city exists, that is all. Uh, yet I would maintain that we know ourselves by the questions we ask and the ones we do not. If we cease asking questions and accept only what we can per perceive. Ooh, I got 500 XP for that, nice. Then we will cease to know ourselves. Dakon's voice has changed slightly, become heavier. Such words have been spoken before. I have heard them and know them. Where have you heard them? The words are mine. Once I knew them and knew their meaning. I had forgotten them until you spoke. That Khan's gaze travels through you and his blade stops shimmering, bleeding of all color until it is translucent. There is a moment of silence, then Dakon Khan looks up at you. I would travel your path with you. Ooh. I accept an extra blade would be welcome. Your path is mine. Strangely enough, his voice seems distant and it echoes as if he was speaking from across a great distance. Very well, let's go. I feel stronger. Hey, I got an I got a new I got a new friend. Hell yes. That's awesome. How's uh Am I not leveled up yet? Uh oh, can I level up? Oh, I did level up. Awesome. Oh, yeah, just now, because I said, I feel stronger. Okay, all right. I have one point that I can put in. Let's see. What would be a good one? So I have 16 strength. So I got some wisdom. Okay, let's go ahead and put my wisdom... Yeah, let's put my wisdom at 16. Let's do that. Woohoo! Nice! Alright, got some extra wisdom. Hells yeah! Alright, I'm a fighter level 5. Experience 16,000. Next level 32,000. Okay, so I think the XP needs double each time. So I must have started at like, what? So like... Say like 2,000, 2,000 to get to level 2, and 4,000 to get to level 3, then 8,000 to get to level 4, then 16,000 to get to level 5. And now, yeah, now, okay, yeah, okay, makes sense. All right, woohoo! Okay, a couple other people I still need to talk to. Let's talk to O, which is this person. You see a man standing stock still. He isn't moving a muscle. On closer examination, it appears that he isn't even breathing, just standing. His eye sockets are empty holes in his face. Contained within their bounds is a flat gray light that seems to dance with possibility. Looking into the sockets, the eerie, empty feeling of a limitless void shivers through you as if you had gazed into a sliver of, of eternity. The head slowly swivels toward you. You notice that no muscles appear to move under his skin as he turns, and he speaks in a pure bell-like tone. Well met, Wanderer. You have forgotten again, haven't you? Okay. Ask him whether he knows you, but don't call him crazy. Okay. Do you know me, stranger? As he opens his mouth, you get the feeling 
You get that feeling of eternity again. Inside his mouth, you see no tongue, no teeth. It's almost as if this man were a shell surrounding an illimitable expanse. I have spoken with you before, and always you forget. Your endless quest to discover yourself ends always in your amnesia. You draw close to the truth and recoil. Let us hope that you have the strength to endure your existence. What do you know of me? How do you know this? I know that you, like a fly, rise up from the wreckage of your old shell, buzz about for a time, and curl up and die at the window of truth. You bumble about the pain, seeking the light without any plan to your actions, and fall exhausted when you fail. You alight on others to feed them from them for a time, and move on with no regard to them. I have watched you come here and listen to your words, and watched you move away no wiser. Will you learn from your mistake, Seeker? Okay, let's ask him who he is. Okay, who are you? I am O. For some reason, when he speaks his name, it sounds like he's speaking of much more than a single letter, as if the speaking of his name contained untold possibilities and nuances. No human tongue could ever create such a sound. Okay, and ask him what he is and what he means. Okay, what are you? It is my name. It is the name of a portion of eternity. I am a letter in the divine alphabet. Understanding me leads to understanding existence. I am writ in the true names of half of everything. My being encompasses truth. I am mathematic, organic, metaphysic. So what does that mean? The divine alphabet is writ in the name of everything that exists from the seed at the hearts of the elemental planes to the core of the great beyond. My brother slash sisters, a single word translates into the two in your mind. Oh, interesting. And I reach across all that is, was, or ever shall be. We are thought and reality and concept in the, unaman in the unimaginable. That mean Then that means you know all the secrets of existence, doesn't it? I know parts of many of them. Without a connection to my brothers slash sisters, I am but a letter. Alone, I am a symbol. Combined, we are language and power. Okay. So you don't know. Okay. So you don't know the secrets of existence. I did not say that. A letter is still a powerful force, even on its own. Allow me to show you. He opens his mouth wider and wider still. The mask of his face tears around his eyes, mouth, and nose, revealing that hint of eternity you glimpsed earlier. You are lost in it, adrift in it, a part of it. You return to your mundane senses and realize that O has vanished. Yet somehow your horizons have expanded. Enlightenment has brushed you, however briefly, across the brow. That was indescribable. Oh! I got wisdom plus one! Hell yes! All right! My wisdom's at 17 now. I'm hella smart. <laughs> Hell yes. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, now I need to talk to Barkus. Who is Barkus? That's the lace. Oh, here's Barkus. Okay. Let's talk to him. You see a leather-skinned man with a hint of ashen color to his face. His teeth seem sharper than normal, and his eyes are filled with the boredom that comes with having seen too much. His voice is nasal and clipped. You again, eh? What do you want this time? Okay. Uh, you again, what do you mean? Yeah, you again. You got a hearing problem or something now? You was in here about 15 years ago, got all bubbed up, smashed up the place, and left a pile of coin that wasn't enough to pay for the damages. So you plucked out your own bleeding eyeball and tells me you'll be back to reclaim it when you got 200 coins together. With 15 years of interest, you got about 500 coins. You got the jink, pal? I got your eye. 500? That's ridiculous. That's the price. Take it or pike it. Ooh, okay, so I need to come back later, but I do want to come back and pay the price for this. Forget it. Answer some other questions for me instead. Hurry it up, will you? I got paying customers. Um, what can you tell me of the patrons here? Oh, that's a lot. I don't make it a point to interfere with the lives of the people who give me their hard-earned chink unless they ask me to. So... 
Over there is Cantrian, plane walker. He's a good one to talk to about any plane walking questions you might have. He's been pretty much everywhere. Down there is Ebb Creekneys, an old Harmonium basher. Don't hold that against him, and a tout. He's got a good heart in him, and he knows Sigil up and down. Them fiends over there are Aetholgrin and Tagarin. Word of advice, don't deal with them. They might be low rankers in the fiend hierarchy, uh, but they're still fr but they're still fiends. Then you got Ilquicks over there, not trustworthy, and some mercy killers looking for some poor sod. Dakon the Gitzerai is a mystery to me. Don't know much about him. He don't talk much. Finally, you interested in earning some free bub? Ooh. Yes. There's a bubber over against the far wall, hanging about in the shadows. She's been trying to work up her courage to slip out without covering her tab. I want you to make sure she don't do that. You do it, you get a free bub here for life. Ooh, okay. I'll do it. I'll let you know when I'm done. Okay, so I'm I gone. need to talk to someone... Yes, here. This one. You see a female dustman. As you near her, she calls out to you. Um, you, over here, approach her. Hey, Cutter, buy a lady a drink. Marcus says it's time for you to settle your tab. Pay up. She jumps a little, and her nervous tension becomes full-fledged anxiety. What are you going to do? Ask you to pay up. Now. Um, I can't afford it. Can you spot me just 10%? I'll, um, give it to him, and he knows I'll pay the rest. How much do you need? Um, I think I need about 100 coins to get started on the debt. Poison her drink with the embalming fluid. Um, I'll lend you the money here. Take it and pay up now. Okay, alright. Let's, uh, let's lend it to her, I guess. We'll be good. She pockets your jean, glances briefly toward the door, almost as if she's weighing her chances of dashing out. Sighs heavily as she realizes there's no chance, and begins to walk lumly toward the bar. Um, my thanks, I suppose. Don't mention it, and don't even think about heading for the door until you've paid up. Okay, now we head back to Barkus. Head back to him. Back again, what now? You won't be having trouble with Mochai again. Yeah, a thousand XP at least. Then friend, you have full bar privileges for free. Anything you want, anytime. Must have been a pretty big tab she ran up. You don't know the half of it. You want a drink now? Set me up. You want a drink? You got a drink. This is what we got for you. Beers, bitters, mead, elemental water, arborean fire wine and fire seeds, cursed hemp wine, heart wine, and batorian whiskey. What'll it be? Uh, let's just go with some beer. Ooh, actually, meat. Meat is delicious. Uh, in real life, too. Uh, I love wheat. Mead. Mead. I said mead. That was a misspeak. You heard me say mead. Definitely nothing else. I, I only like meat. And water, actually. Water. Water's best for you. Drink water. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I said meat. Okay. <laughs> you quaff the weak drink. The flavor is, isn't exactly bold, but it's filling and it's alcoholic. It doesn't seem to do anything else for you. What'll it be, Cutter? Alright, answer some questions for me. Uh, okay. Want to talk to him about anything else? Uh. Nope, actually, I think that's good. Alright. Okay, well, I think that does it here for the bar. And. Ooh, yes, actually. Okay. All right. Probably not going to go too much longer. I know there's more to do here, but I've been going for, I think, 
over two hours now. Oh, god damn it, I forgot about these guys. I'm hurt. Oh shit. I need to heal. I need to heal. I'm gonna use the rest of my healing. You see that? Talk about beating a dead horse. Damn it. You have awakened. Oh god damn it, that's so much that I have to go back through. God damn it. Did I at least keep all my stuff? Okay, yeah, at least I still have everything. God damn, that sucks. Ugh. Okay, alright. Let's head out. At least dying is just a nuisance, like... Dumb. Like they say in the... Okay. What? See... Okay. You know what? Screw this guy. Lean in as if to whisper something to him, then snap his neck. So you lean in to whisper to him, the dustman leans in as well, and he, as he comes within arm's reach, your hands clamp onto his temples, and you twist his head sharply to the left. Can't have you alerted your friends. Better you than me, Dusty. Tuck the limp body into the shadows. Alright. Okay, let's take that. And can I take anything else? Nope. Okay. Well, let's head out now. There right. we go. Finally. Oh yes, okay. Now then. Now I want oh, wait. What's up? Does... Oh, he leveled up. Good for you, Mort. Okay, now I want Endure. to talk to Dakon. In enduring grow strong. Dialogue. What is your will? Um, there are things I would know, Dakon. I'll hear you. Um Let's see, what is it I wanted to ask? Okay. I had some questions about the Gitsurai. Um, I had some questions about Gisarai language. Can you teach me the ways in which your people speak? Know that the speech of the people has its foundation in history. All things are as story to us. Metaphor is a tool and an inspiration to the strength. No, when we speak of Torig's table, we remember that Torig was noted for his hospitality and goodwill. When we speak of Selkant's heart, we recall the lecherous and cruel nature of Selkant. I understand. Will you teach me? Updated my journal. Woohoo! Nice! Dekon teaches you some of the common forms of speech. A wise man is said to have wrote the Book of the Anarchs. While to accuse another of treason is to remember Vilquar's eye. It is said of generous people that their cupboards are bare. Common greetings include Hail, Sword Rinker, and Sir Chai's kin bow to you. To which one should respond, and the traveler is pleased. Oh, the traveler! I know him. Or, I know of him. He's, uh, yeah, he's one of the gods. Um, Dakon is a skilled teacher. After his instruction, you feel capable of exchanging proper greetings with other, uh, Gisarai. Okay, do I want... Ooh, okay. Some other questions. Had some other questions. I wanted to ask you about our travels. Can you tell me about the city of Sigil? Okay, so apparently if I follow this line of thinking, or this line of dialogue again, then I can get some more XP? Um, heard the... That con, how is it I know your words? I spoke the words, but they do not belong to me. Others may know them for the knowing of it very well. Okay, apparently that's not the case then. This guy lied to me. Um. Oh 
Okay. Okay, I let's... shall serve. Whoops. I'm gone. Okay, let's head back down here. Down to the southeast part again. There we go. Okay. So apparently there's another Gitzerai here in the southeast part of town. If I talk to him, then I can get some XP. Is it this guy? Maybe, let's try. See a thin man with stained clothes, a hooked nose, and two stubby horns jutting from his forehead. He is stumbling about and muttering to himself. He stinks of brine, vomit, and cheap wine. Greetings. Hey, the man squints clearly at you. What is it? What? Never mind. Sorry to bother you. Okay. Never mind. Not that guy. Okay. Seems like. At least my guide has him pictured as over here. Clearly that's not the case. So... Okay, let's Done. try... Oh yeah, that's right, there's this guy. We can go talk to Morns for Trees again. Okay, yeah, let's talk to him again. Um, no, I wanted to ask Dakon to help you. One finds your request most intriguing. Trees in the hive, like cities in limbo. They would stand as a testament to the will of the people, not to bow to that which would surround and devour them. To take what has been thrust upon them or left behind and make good of it. I too will care for these trees. Thanks, I had some questions, Morns. He nods. Uh, any change in the trees yet? Woohoo! Yes, friend, there has been. It's so slight you can barely see it, but look, fresh sap from the trunk. And a handful of new buds. It's only a matter of time now. I think I thank you again for giving me hope once more. You're welcome, Morns for Trees. Farewell. Woohoo! Alright! Okay, let's find that Gitzerai. Where is he at? Why not then? Just show it to me. Okay. Oh, he's got a, just a rusty dagger, huh? What about you? Ooh, a bronze bracelet. Damn. Okay. Ooh, I can put that in there, though. Nice, 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 nice. Cool. Okay. Huh. Alright, where on earth is this other Gitzerai? Said he's... Take 
take is gold, thank you. Oh, sorry, copper comments, my bad. Come on in, buy a drink, see the burning okay. man. He's on oh, here fire. he is, here he is. It's the right townsperson. Come on, come on, stop. Stop, stop. For the love of God, thank you. Gets right town's person. This gift turns to face you as you approach. Like Dakon, he has a yellow cast to his skin and a gaunt frame. His, uh, his clothing is a curious blend of sharp colors and dull mud-stained browns. The gift's dead black eyes flicker over Dakon than you. Sir Chai's kin bow to you. The Gisserai ignores you and turns to Dakon instead. He speaks several clipped words in a strange, low tongue. If you understand the inflections correctly, he just said, All beholden, Zerth. Wait and listen to Dakon's reply. Dakon replies in the same tongue. The sentence structure is odd. You think Dakon said, This one is numbered among the faithful. What is he saying, Dakon? The Gisserai turns to you as you speak, then turns back to Dakon and speaks again, this time at great length. Try and translate. You have difficulty deciphering the sentence structure, but you think he said, there is one by Dakon's name who is not one of the people. It is said that his mind is divided. It is said that he is a Zerth that does not know the words of Zerthamon. Wait and listen to Dakon's reply. Dakon makes the same reply as before. The tone has changed slightly, but the meaning seems to be intact. This one is numbered among the faithful. Dakon falls silent, as if to give the words time to sink in. The one beside me speaks, will you hear him? Listen. The gift's response is so quick it almost has the force of an attack behind it. You're not certain if you got the entire meaning, but it seems the gift just issued some sort of challenge to Dakon in the form of a question. Zerth, do you obey the words of this human? Okay, let Dakon do the talking. Okay, wait and see what Dakon says. Dakon, Dakon's reply is a short one, but his speech is slowed, as if he has to drag the words from his throat. T'Cha's choice has become mine. Listen. The gith falls silent for a time. This matter carries the stink of the illithid about it. His eyes flicker across Dakon's face. I see no chains upon you. You speak your mind. How did this blasphemy come to be? Listen. Dakon speaks slowly again. The chains are my own. His skin seems to take on an ashen shade as he speaks. It sounds like every word is slowly killing him. Anarch of a hundred years, there is no hourglass that can measure the table. The matter is as twisted as Frihi's roots. Its resolution is one of impossibility and may never come. Dakon frowns, then his voice strengthens. The one beside me speaks, will you hear him? Wait. The gith does not look at you. His attention is focused on Doth and Dakon. He may speak. I will hear him. Dakon turns to you. He will hear you. If you could ask... If you could ask him if... Your words are known to me, the Gisserai interrupts. Face me and speak your mind, and I will hear you. Very well, I had some questions. Ach Ali drowning. I'm sorry? Your question is... A stab in the dark, an arrow without direction, his forehead wrinkles. The answer to this question would fill the mind of an anarch. There is no time for such an answer. Tell me plain me that uh what you wish known. Okay. Let's see. Okay, ask him very specific questions. Okay. Can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? It is said she is the queen of this city. Her mind is not known to me. Okay. I have lost a journal. Have you seen one? The object is not known to me. I seek someone named Farad. Do you know of him? That, is, that one is not known to me. Can you tell me about Dakon? He walks with you. His forehead creases. How is he not known to you? I was hoping you, took, you could tell me something about him. He is not speechless. If you would know him, put the questions to him. Do not insult us both by treating one as a statue. Okay, my bad. Uh, can you tell me where the city is located? The city touches all places. What do you mean? The city is a cage with many doors. Each door touches another place. 
Why do you call this city a cage? Any structure with locked doors is a cage. Locked doors? Every door in this cage is locked. Each door has its own key. Only then may you leave. Where are these doors located? Everywhere. They number as many as the places they touch. Places like where? The doors of this cage leads to everywhere. Every plane, every world. I don't understand. It is difficult to understand. It is not difficult to accept. Where do these doors you speak of lead? Oh yeah, I already asked that. Okay, I had some other questions. Where can you tell me can you tell me where I might find work? There is little work here. You can hunt rats for bounties, you can gather the dead. Bounties on rats. The city pays for rat tails. Take them to one of the vermin control offices. I see, and some other. Tell me what there is of interest around here. You are not known to me. What is interesting to you may not interest me. Never mind, I'm sorry to trouble you. Okay, now I can speak to you, Dakar. I hear again. your words. Oops, wrong thing. There we go. What is your will? Okay, there are things I would know, Dakon. Later. Oh, the Gitsurai language. Oh, yes, there we go. What is T'Cha's choice? Dakon's forehead creases and his eyes narrow. I would know how you came to know that expression. You spoke it when we met with that Gitsurai. I would know what you meant by it. It is an expression that knows many meanings. Uh, tell me one of them. T'Cha's choice speaks of one who has no choice in their actions. So when I asked you to speak to the Gisterai, you had no choice but to do it? Why? The Khan's blade ripples, and you watch as the edges become grayed and dulled. His face clenches, and he speaks through his teeth. It is not my will to speak of this. I want to hear you speak of it. In fact, you said a number of things in that conversation which interested me. Know that your will is my will. When you speak, know I must hear you. Know that your words may stay my blade or guide it to the throat of another. What, but why? <laughs> Holy shit! 3000 XP, god damn! Akon seems to look through you as if meeting your gaze is unbearable. Your path is my path, I am chained to you. You're my slave? Oh, you can't say that word anymore. Oh my god. <laughs> as at the word slave, Dakon's face collapses in pain, as if he was struck. It is as if the word was a dagger stabbing at the core of his suffering. But why, Dakon? No, it is a long tale, and know that nothing is gained in the telling. I would hear it. Updated my journal. The people do not allow themselves to be enslaved to another in deed or chains. If we find ourselves in such a cage, we act to free ourselves, even if it means that we must endure another cage for a time. You performed a great service for me, in so doing you enslaved me. I acted to free myself. Know that I surrendered my word in myself to act in your name until your death. But I can't die. That was not known to this one. I surrendered my word to him. Uh, I surrendered myself. Know that there is no that there is now nothing left that I may surrender except my life. Know now that I follow you only so I might die. Hey Shepherd! One of my cats came to say hello. What was the service I gave you that chained you? You saved this one's life. In exchange, your life became mine. How did I save your life? Upon the rolling plain of limbo, the people shape cities from the chaos with their thoughts. Know that there is no place for a divided mind. Dakon raises the blade from his shoulder and holds it before him. As he stares at it, it sharpens until it is almost as thin as a piece of paper. Go on. A divided mind is an unfocused mind. A divided mind fractures walls and weakens stone. As Dakon speaks, the edges of the blade corrode slightly, the metal misting and melting along the edges. Many divided minds may destroy a city. I understand. Go on. Long have I known the words of Zerthamon. Through my voice, many have come to know the words of Zerthamon. 
The Zerth protect the community from all threats, whether to the body or the mind. They are the guiding stones in the chaos. So it came to pass that I spoke the words of Zerthamon without knowing the words of Zerthamon. It came to pass that I no longer knew myself. So you doubted the words. No, Dakon's voice is edged and his blade sharpens in response. I knew the words. Yet it came into my heart that perhaps others did not know the words of Zerthamon knew them. Oh, knew the words as Zerthamon knew them. And so division formed. As my mind became as two, as my mind became divided, those that looked to me as a guiding stone became divided. Many scores of Gisserai, many hundreds of scores of Gisserai doubted. Shraktlor, sh however you pronounce that, <laughs> died that day. Um, so those that followed you came to doubt the words as well, and the city was weakened. The enemies of Zerthamon came. Know that their hatred of his words and the people lent their blade strength. Know that they sensed the weakened city and they brought war with them. Many Gisurai drowned in the chaos and beneath the blades of our enemies. Small beads of metal appear on the surface of the blade as if it is blistering. Know that know this happened long ago. What happened to you? As I fell from the walls of Shracked lore. Know that myself was broken, my blade was missed, my mind divided. I was adrift upon limbo seas, and I wished to drown. I died for days, my mind awash in division. When death finally came to me, it wore your skin, and it had your voice. Me. You asked that I hear you. As Dakon says the words, your vision bleeds outwards, uh, and a crawling sensation begins to worm its way through the back of your skull. You feel nauseous for a moment, and your vision is suddenly as chaos, smeared, twisted, and you are someplace else, someplace in the past. Everything around you is in turmoil. Your vision is hazy, swirling, dizzying, all at once. There is mist, pockets of fire, islands of mud, stone, and ice-covered rocks swimming through the plain, like fish impacting and dissolving. Troplets of water, arcs arcing through the howling air and lashing your skin like teeth. You choke back your nausea and you steady yourself. This is the plane of limbo. All is chaos, nothing is stable. You focus on the dying man that lies before you. It is why you have come to this place. Echo, examine this earth, see if he still lives. The man is a Gitzerai, his body embedded in an earthen pocket that swirls around him. Unconsciously, he has found a grave from the elements. And, through, and though bits of fire and water lick at his face, he does not respond. His hands are ashen, his, clo his cold black eyes focusing on nothing. His emaciated frame speaks of starvation, but you know it is the least of his wounds. It is faith that dealt him the mortal blow. Look for the blade he carries. In his limp left hand is a twisted mass of metal, its surface having melted around his hand like a gauntlet. As you watch, it steams and hisses like a diseased snake. The Gitzerai does not seem to be aware of it, but it is that weapon that has brought you here. Dakon, Surth, of Shracked Lore, Drowning, Last Wielder of the Karak Blade, know that I have come to you with the words of Zerthamon, carved not in chaos but in stone, carved by the will in an unbroken circle. At the word Zerthamon, Dakon's eyes roll in their sockets, and they attempt to focus upon you. With effort, he cracks his mouth to speak, but only a dry hiss emerges. You bring forth the stone from your pack and hold it before him so he can see. Know that the words of Zerthamon inscribed upon the stone are true, and know that your divided mind need be divided no longer. All you must do is take the stone, and you shall know yourself again. Dakon's eyes flicker over the unbroken circle of Zerthamon, and for a moment you think he might be too close to death to recognize it. Then the right hand twitches, and he pulls it slowly from its earthen prison. The clumps of earth streaming off it become water in Limbo's chaotic winds. His skeletal hands clutch the stone like a drowning man, and his eyes flash. Know that I have saved your life, Dakon, Zerth of Shraktlor. Updated my journal. <laughs>
Woo! 6,000 XP. Hell yes. Sorry, Shepard. I just got excited there. It's okay, baby. You're okay. Akan's eyes turn from the stone and flicker over you, and he hisses again, too dry for a moment to muster the words. He blinks slowly, then speaks his voice barely above a whisper. But the words are what you wanted to hear. My life is yours until yours is no more. Close your eyes, return to the present. That con is silent. I heard your words, the chaos in my mind became still. I knew myself again. So you got the circle from me. Updated my journal. Yes, and knowing its words, I knew myself. That is all I wish to know. Let's move on. Oh, God, that was so much reading. Holy shit. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Okay. There's one or two more things that I want to do before we end it here, but... Wait, what? Done. Okay, there we go. Now we're all heading over. Yep, let's head out. There's one more thing, and then we'll go and call it there, because we have only actually explored, like, half the city. <laughs> so, I feel like this is a good stopping point once we, once we finish up one or two other things here. I'm gone. Maybe I can gut a dusty... Cause I need to find Ingress. Oh God! Looks like the dust lost one of the dead. Did you see that? Die! There we go. All right. Got some coin and some more coin. Hell yes! Okay, I'm looking for Ingress. She is up here, I believe. Oh yeah, Ingress was no, this is where Septai was, right? Hey, we're being watched, Chief. Just look natural. Uh casual. Okay. Was Ingress in here? I forget. It's death of names, Quentin. Septai, no, she was not in here. There she is, Ingress. I knew she was up here. Okay, you see Ingress. She is huddled inside her cloak of dirty rags. Her teeth chattering, she is glancing furtively about her, as if expecting to be attacked at any moment. Greetings, Ingress. Hey, you? She squints at you. What is it you want me now? You want me to leave? Not leaving the city, so I'm not. I can't. Try it. It's not a city. It's a prison to everywhere. Ingress, I found someone who can take you back to your home plane. Ingress falls silent. I want to go, want to leave this place. His name is Kandrian. It should be along shortly to help you. Trust him, alright? Ingress says nothing, merely nods quietly, her teeth chattering inside her mouth. I'll go back and meet Kandrian at the smoldering corpse bar and make sure everything turned out alright. Be strong, Ingress. Updated my journal. Woohoo! All right, helped her out. Okay, now I go back and talk to Kandrian. Okay. Let's just zoom all the way down here. Okay, so, yep, I want to... Yeah, so I go back there. Okay. Alright, so basically I just need to report Done. to Candrian. Or not report, return to Candrian. Talk to him. And then basically that's it. I'll head over to the start of the next area, but that'll end it for this part. I'll continue on with everything else in the hive next time. Okay, there we go. Come on in, Cutter! Come on in, Cutter! You're gonna love this! Okay, yeah, 
so Cantry. All right. He was here. He is Cantry right here. Cantry and stands as you approach him. The tooth woman wanted you to have these. He says, holding out his hand. She wanted to express her thanks, even out the balance book, as it were be done with the damned things. In the palm of his hand are Ingress's dancing teeth. Ugh. And he smoothly deposits them into your hand. Enjoy them, Seeker. Alright, farewell. Updated my journal. Woohoo, okay. Um. Oh, a copper earring and the negative token. Ooh, okay, I do want those. Okay, let's drop a rag. Take this. And I'll go ahead and also drop the scalpel. There we go. I got a copper earring as well, and Ingress's teeth. Okay, and apparently those are good for Mort to have. They're weapons for him, huh? Huh? Mort Spikes. Okay, so if I go here, how do I, how do I give him a weapon? Um, okay. Do I just, do I just drop them and then select Mort and pick them up as him? Dumb. What? Sure, why not? Yeah, let's try that. Oh my god, I could be having my companions. Oh my god, I never realized that. Damn, I'm stupid. Okay. Hey, come on. Oh, what happened to his bite? Did he only get one? Interesting. Okay, um... Damn, I did not realize that. Okay, well, let us... All right. Before we end, then, go and pick up everything that I dropped, because I thought it would be worthless to take, or not effective to take. Much, much later. Okay, I collected everything that I could remember that I dropped. So now let's head in to the next area of the game, and we will end it there. So this should be the southwest section of. Wait, no, nope, no, 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 not this one, not this one. I'm gone. Yep, this was not the right area. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I'm gone. Okay, never mind, not that place. Oh, what, now y'all want something? Damn. We'll give you a something. See that? What's the word, Chief? Sure, the why not? sings true. Ooh, nice. What's he got? I'm I'm liking uh I'm liking this guy. He's cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm that, was, uh, that was definitely the wrong area because it was not supposed to be named that. According to my guide, it's just supposed to be like the hive southwest. Which I mean, that sure looked like a southwest area to me, but oh well, I guess it's over here then I guess. Looks like just west, but what do I know? Nothing, apparently. I know nothing, Jen Snow. Oh well, we'll head over here. Okay, there we go. Alright, well, like I said, that's gonna do it for this part. 
Hope you all enjoy it, because I know I sure have a fun time playing this game, even though my mouth gets so dry by the end of it. It's still a lot of fun. I'm having a blast with this game. If you enjoy it as well, then please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, all that good stuff, and not only supports this channel, but it lets you know when I drop the next part of this playthrough and all the other parts of the other video games that I am playing through. I'm currently playing through the original Resident Evil 2, if you're interested in that. I've also played through many other games that are up on this channel as well, and you are free to check out any and all of them that you want. Anyways, hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you all next time.